know it's Charlotte Mount Pen here and I'm just coming to the end of a nice little run around Whittle Dean on the banks of the Tyne, a route that I planned and a route that part way through my husband agreed to come with me and part way through it led to him yelling this is not fun mainly due to the water level of streams the ridiculous mud and the skin splitting brambles but anyway we're nearly home so it must be time for a cup of tea and a listen to the next episode of tea and trails here's gary and eddie oh thanks charlotte charlotte is a raw that would have taken i'm not going to say us it would have taken me at least 10 attempts to get that right i'm loving the intros yeah please keep them coming and don't be sad if every week you tune in thinking today's the day this is my moment because um we have a few in the inbox we're working through them we love them keep sending them in don't be discouraged they will arrive and if it doesn't happen this week it could be next week you could be the star of the show welcome to episode 82 of the tea and trails podcast this week we are joined by me Guy Sorry, from the guys. podcast <laughs> with his tight red shorts, oh. his baby dragon, and his package for the world. <laughs> to a say lot, it was wasn't great. it? It was a it lot was for look. us to I'm handle. Not, I'm not too sure 2025 will be the same look. <laughs> <on reflection. laughs> I've not enjoyed any photograph I've seen of myself, actually. Do you know what I heard about? photographs and now I I say this is that when you know when you see a beautiful sunset and you go oh yep. I, I want to take a picture of that or like a mountain view of your run you take a picture and it never looks how it does it never looks as good so now when I see pictures of myself which I never like does anybody like pictures of themselves you're always like what the hell then I think of that and I think yeah but think of the sunset pictures the mountain they never look as good so you did look good you did look good you <laughs> Yeah, there's, there's a lot going on in those shorts, but anyway. <laughs> but the shorts were great for areas with poor signal. I heard a few times that there was a bit of lag right, on Yeah, you the... were conducting 3G through your... <laughs> well, people knew I was coming. There was at least twice. I think it was Mardale and Chapel style. People knew Gary was incoming with the red shorts, even though the tracker wasn't quite up to speed. So I'm not too sure. Yeah, are they going to come back? Red is the signature colour, maybe not the compression shorts. <laughs> too sure. Immediately when I saw my friends I don't want to put you off yeah I don't want to put you off because you know we all I feel it's important for us to be able to express ourselves um in a safe place and I haven't seen them live I've only seen pictures so maybe I need a (laughs) fashion show anyway we've got all the usual shenanigans and we have some winners yeah of Phoenix Light Head Torch winners are announced. Thank you to our Patreon partners who share their discount codes with our patrons. We have Precision Fuel and Hydration, Velo Forte, Protein Rebel, Tiki Boo, Mountain Fuel, Outdoor Active, Silver Sweden, Active Root, The Centurion Running Store, Sportshoes.com, Big Bubble Hats, X Miles, Fawnstein Fire Cottages, Yugoku Projects, Hellfire Events, Red Bear Sports, The Alba Map, Retainer Group Cycle Protection, Summit Crazy, Beat It Sports, Lumi Activewear, Phoenix Lights UK, Bridgedale Socks, Nam 4, Knack Nutrition, and Ultra Trail 2. Extra shout out to Precision Fuel and Hydration and Protein Rebel. We use their products every month to help fuel, hydrate and recover. And if you'd like to save some money, support the podcast and our partners, then please, please, please consider joining Patreon. We couldn't do this without you guys. Also pop over to Summit Crazy if you'd like to buy some awesome tea and trails merch. Thank you to Precision Fuel and Hydration, x Phoenix Light and Protein Rebel for sponsoring this week's show. Don't forget, reminding Gary, pop over to Precision Fuel and Hydration. It's probably a bit early to talk about fueling. Don't forget to pop over to Precision Fuel and Hydration, book in with a sort scientist, read some case studies or use their fueling planner. And remember, if races and your fueling haven't gone quite well, don't hide from the guys and go, look, thanks for the advice, but they didn't work. Go back to them and they can help again, break down what you did and come up with some different ideas, different solutions. Are you thinking of anybody in particular. Just, just for a friend, <laughs> just for a friend out there. <laughs> yeah, I do need to do my little hundred nutrition debrief. So I will book in with another call, especially, you know, I've got 13 valleys coming up, which is good. I've got nothing emotional. I'll say that, goodness me. I'm not even going to bother saying it because I know as soon as that whistle gun goes, I will be off. But yeah, I need to be mindful. One takeaway, I won't go into too much, but I need to have a, a plan B for yes. my 
fuel and hydration. It's great, you know, 50 whatever, always learning. So I'm looking forward to their feedback. I love the way that Emily sent you an email, like yeah. saying, how did it go? She checked in and seen that you'd finished. And I love that. Well, because she would have known I wasn't happy, but she had a lovely tone, lovely tone in that email. But I'm pretty sure I'm not going to do. I don't think there's any value in no, my case. Study. I know. Well, don't worry. Are you in excellent company because every time they say, can we do a case study? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, good. I love that idea. And then I'm like, I didn't even take the cap off that gel. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't really remember much from about two o'clock onwards on Saturday afternoon. So even if I was fueling like a pro, I just couldn't recall. Couldn't recall what I did. Patrons, you can get 15% off over at Precision Fuel and Hydration. Also, if you would like to try Precision Fuel and Hydration, then new customers can get 15% off their first order with the code T24. That's super simple in all caps, T24. New Protein Rebel customers can enjoy 15% off their first order with the code T15, but that's not all caps. T, it's capital T, lowercase E, A, and 15. Dean links to all our sponsors can be found over at tntrails.com or in the show notes. How are you doing, Eddie? Who's going first? Oh, well, we're having dramas. It's just it's stress and stress manifests itself, it seems, in my body now in becoming the creakiest, oldest. Gary, my body is just like over the last week, every day I've got up to go reddening and something else has really hurt. Is it cortisol? What, yeah, my the... high cortisol. I think the cortisol is ripping through my muscles yeah. and <laughs> causing... Also, I think when you do a lot of travelling, so I think a lot of a lot of things are compounding the fact that I am a wizened old woman. But doing a lot of travelling, you're out of your routine, you're sleeping in different beds. I drove from the bottom of Wales to the mid, the middle of Scotland by myself with three children in a left-hand drive van. Rear for you, Eddie. Three children, oh, wow. two <laughs> I treated myself on the way, though, to a night at Tea Bay. And you weren't that far away, Gary, but I couldn't. I, I was I listening up. for you honking the horn. Yeah, I woke up and I, everyone was still asleep. And I was like, I could drive and maybe catch you at Pooley Bridge. But <laughs> actually, it's a bit further than I thought it was. But I was... I could, I could almost smell you over this. And I'm sure that hasn't, the drop, my body was, my knees were so sore after, because it's in the van, it's not a comfy driving position. It's quite erect. South Wales to T-Bay, what are you talking about there in hours? That's, oh my God. Oh, and the traffic, the traffic on the M6 and the stress of a left-hand drive and looking over your right shoulder where there's two children sitting and probably a dog as well and you can't hear the mirror. Do it. <laughs> um, so I left at nine in the morning and I got to T-Bay at quarter to seven at night, I think. The traffic was bad. The traffic was bad. Um, basically, the traffic was fine till Cardiff. <laughs> it was like really slow driving, which didn't help. My Achilles was like, ah. Oh. All my runs at the moment are like five o'clock in the morning with the bloody dogs that won't sleep in strange places that keep waking me up. So they're just useless because I'm just, I like, one, I'm hungry because I want my breakfast. And then I'm jogging around like, oh, everything. I need a couple of hours of movement before... Anyway, I feel like there's no progress and I hate not making progress in my life in anything. It's tough because running, we get so much from it, either just um, emotionally and physically. But there's only so much you can put in a cup and we yes. have to prioritise other stuff. <sighs> The thing that you love and keeps you shit together, <laughs> you, have to, you can't do it. So I've had a couple, Gary, I've had a couple of runs the last week where I've actually had to walk because okay. my body has been so sore or I've had to come home oh. and just gone... <gasps> I just need to foam roll. I just need to do, but I just, what I really need is heads. I just need the running. It's not the same. Anything else is not the same. I just need an hour of day of where there isn't anybody. Mummy, mummy, yeah. mummy, mummy, mummy. She hit me. He hit me. He did it. But what? I'm hungry. I just, not even that, but do not even the kids. Just, I just need not to be, be, I just need to be raw dogging. <laughs> Well, myself. <laughs> and um, and then when the body is like, ah, oh, and you're like, no, 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 I just need, I don't care what you do. I just need you not to be shouting at me as well. So we've had a few moments, but 
I can't, as I said to Bryn, I can't keep moaning about it. I need to do something about it. So I've really committed to my foam rolling, which I do find really helps. As yeah. I got older, the foam roller gets closer and closer to my bed. <laughs> 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 I do find like lots of foam rolling. And now the Olympics are on. I mean, I can just lie down and roll while I'm watching all these watching all these athletes that I want to be that I'm never going to be. So yeah, frust I'm frustrated basically, but also I what was I expecting? Really, I think it's just a lot of travel, a lot of change, and then well, I'm, how am I going to put some eighty mile weeks into that, Eddie? What are you thinking? Yeah. You wouldn't. It's not your time at the moment, it's, Eddie. It's not your time, and that's really hard to um, because we always want it to be our time. You know, you love. I love my routine. I thrive off a routine. I thrive off training. I love hard sessions, and then when you're like, well, I can't do that. What is it? You sort of like you. you your first default is to get annoyed and get angry yeah that's not the that's not the mother my children need right now they need a they need a steady plate so I'm having to swallow that but it's good this podcast is great because I have to think about how to explain it on the podcast but also I know that people will get it and hear it and go yeah when you have big stresses in the in the other side of your life it's amazing how much it affects your your body and your ability to train. Stress is stress. And I say this to my athletes all the time when they, some of them do like proper jobs, Gary, not this, yeah. like proper jobs. And they're saving lives. They're saving lives. And I'm like, you know, like, oh, I can train more. I'm like, that stress is enormous in your life. So you've got to try and get the balance. So that is my key word at the moment is the balance. I've got to get the balance that I've got to feel like I, I'm getting out of my run. I'm maintaining my fitness. You know, I'm maintaining something that hopefully come the end of August, I can dig around in a deep, deep hole and salvage, pull out the athlete I once was, but not allow it to stress. And I said that right. I've said that for months, haven't I? After Northern Traverse, I was like, the summer is not my time. But when yeah. you're actually in it and it's not your time, it's quite a hard pill to sweat. Watching you at Lake La Hundred and everybody at Lake La Hundred, I had to, I was like, why am I torturing myself with this when you your I'm on the M6 with my cranky old legs trying to push a pedal yeah. going look no we need to do 90 minutes and I need to beat this sat nav because it's telling me it's going to take me three hours and we need to do it in two hours <laughs> it's so frustrating it's so frustrating but it's, it's you know it's not all sunshine and roses and it's not all running in our lives you know I've had running in my life since I was knee high to a grasshopper and it will be there it's just in a different form and it's in a different form but this won't be forever either when i think back to three children gary how carefree life was compared to now that uh yeah yeah you just have to you have to make decisions and sometimes sometimes they suck sometimes they suck. but wouldn't have it anyway and love my kids i love my kids dearly and i'm not blaming them they're not they're not really the problem it's more me trying to do everything and fit everything in and keep running prioritized. Bryn's so good at it because he's just like, pfft, not, he can step away, but I'm an addict, yeah. Gary. I'm an addict. And if I don't get yeah. my daily run in and I don't get like three miles, he'll, he could bring and go out. Like he went out yesterday and he came back after like 25 minutes. I was like, Oh, my back's a bit twingy. So I'm going to do some stretches and exercise. And I was like, Whoa, that is, that's sensational. Cause I'd have been like, Nope, I've got to do an hour and then I'll come back. I'm always impressed when someone has a, they physically schedule in a rest day. I really struggle with that. I know. God, addicts are us. Here we are. Anyway. So onwards, the body is feeling feeling a bit better and it's nice we're now settled in one place for the next few weeks still out of a bag but at least there is a, a little semblance of normality and we do have I do have my first Tesco delivery booked for nine years I'm really excited I'm really enjoying add to my basket add to my basket oh my gosh anyway what's up how did the last week go pre-race before we get into the deets for you first up we don't do birthdays weddings or shout outs so do not email in I'm deaf for 
not going to wish Mark and Tanya all the best for their big day. Or maybe, oh, it depends on when they're tuning in. So yeah, hopefully they had a wonderful day. The odds are against me getting this out for Friday because it's a uh, thirsty Thursday tonight. Yeah, Mark is such a lovely guy. Send it hugs and lots of tea and trails. Love to you and Tanya. When I first read it, I was like, oh God, you're getting quite sick. You're getting a bit like, I, would, I don't have time for this. Special mentions though. Special mentions for special people. For my week, yeah. Nice and easy build up. About 20 miles of running before the actual race. I did the session, yeah. Eight minutes in zone four, three times a little hill. That was nice. Went for a coffee with Lisa afterwards. I enjoyed that. Yeah, just short runs and dog jogs. I watched. Have you? You would have seen this. Killing no, Eve. No, 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 no. I appreciate we are really late to the party with this. Um, I'm not even too sure if there's Killing Eve three, season two, three, and four. But uh, yeah, absolutely sensational. And then yeah, we travelled over to the lakes on. Thursday, I was in the youth hostel and it was just like going back in time to 2023. The same faces. We had a shared dorm with a guy called Julian Wareham. I think a lot of people will know who Julian is. He's popped up on various big, long races. Yeah, nice to have a catch up. I think he's on episode 30. So Julian's got a little... <laughs> he's got was a little he asking you questions? <laughs> what, 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 where are we in episode 30? Was yeah. <laughs> he like... So it's a little while, it's a little while before Julian catches up. But it is great. You know, when you get to a dorm, when it's a shared dorm, you've just got everything crossed that it's not going to be a rowdy dorm. So yeah, when there's other runners in there, you know, no one's going to be up late. There's no faffing on, not too much faffing on. No one's going to roll in at two in the morning, drunk, nice and relaxing, slept or okay too. We saw a friend of the show, Angela Green, at breakfast. We recreated the selfie. That's three years now. <laughs> <laughs> It's great. Always good to see Angela. She had a strong outfit, fitted chapel style. It was a Star Wars theme. I just wish I was a bit more present. I was, I think I was quite spaced out at chapel style, so I didn't appreciate Angela's skin tight outfit and her, and her melon. <laughs> Leave what? It <laughs> it's a Yoda melon. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I thought you said her skin tight outfit and her melons. I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said you said her skin tight outfit and her melons. I was like, oh. <laughs> and that's how I felt, you know, super chilled. I checked the heart rate variability, even though you can't do anything about it. Slap bang in the middle of the green. Everything was going great. Complete contrast to last year, where I think my heart rate variability had tanked and I was a bag of nerves. We'll leave it there. All will be revealed. We chatted before we recorded and hopefully people can connect with this. I'm not feeling great at the moment. And I'm not too sure if these are just normal emotions that you feel after mourning a not so good race, or I'm hanging on to things a little bit too long. Every day, things are getting a little bit better. But yeah, my mindset, my frame of mind currently is not great. And I think it's mainly with these super big long runs, you can't just go out next week and try and put it all right. So currently not great, but I think me and, and loads of other people are probably feeling exactly the same. Firstly, you've come to the right place because we're a safe space. And also you're talking to somebody who's been there many times. But also we always say, remember, after races, no big decisions the next week. No big decisions. Let it flow. Ride the roller coaster, the highs and lows, and you feel better every day. But we're here for you. We're here for your love. Through the coaches. Do you ever have a problem with swollen extremities, Eddie? You think you're so funny. <laughs> I do. I do. <laughs> I do. You do. Maybe not the same extremities as our patron Anita Ray does. Yeah, one of our patrons does. This week's question comes from Anita Rear. Hi, I am 60 years old and started running at 50, having been pretty inactive until that point. I have come up through 5k, 10k, half marathon, road marathon and trail marathon and have my first ultra in August, a 50k ultra march. No running allowed on the southwest coast path and Exmoor. Exmoor? Exmoor? Exmoor. Tomatoes. Tomatoes. And there was a 12... <laughs> Our cut off. <laughs> I've been doing a minimum of 40 miles a week since January, and I'm now increasing the length of the long walk and trying to up the pace too. My question is, my hands and fingers have started to swell 
as I have increased the distance. Any ideas what causes this and what, if anything, I can do to help? Many thanks. Please don't stop at 100 episodes. Oh, yeah, Eddie, you mentioned that we're going to call it a day at 100. It will be oh, like yeah, amazing. we definitely are. 100, <laughs> I've got sort of 24 left in me, basically, and then I'm done. I'm an empty shell. No, it looks like, <laughs> like losing friends read the question. <laughs> oh, well, no, I do get this. So I'm going to take notes, actually. On long days, especially, my little chubby fingers get even chubbier. Two of our coaches have done epic, epic races. My goodness me. Yeah, Eddie, any experience yourself? Can we see your chubby fingers first before we... <laughs> little digits. <laughs> Ooh. Quite chubby. Ooh. Is that an are. OnlyFans page that you can... Do people like <laughs> have so Gary Lisa said that Lisa said they were powerful, but I'll take that. Not chubby. Mm. Oh, she loves you. <laughs> um, nice. There's a couple of reasons for swollen um, hands and fingers. And the biggest one is probably hyponatremia, which is a low level of salt, basically. You're dehydrated. So... It can be hyponatremia or it can be that the blood flow from your feet, which is probably more related. Well, I don't know. In, Trish and I were just comparing the swelling of spine stories. And I think probably with a really epic, epic uh, long adventure, it's both that your body has given up sending any blood to your extremities. And so it's the blood vessels are swelling to try and get uh, blood to them um, going, don't forget us, go. But also, I think it probably an epic level of dehydration as well. But I think in this case, it probably is your salt levels aren't right. I know that if I run for like three hours, maybe um, I start to feel well, I start to feel my wedding ring getting a little bit tight around my fingers. And then I look down and it's normally a sign to get some salt in. So easily, I think it's easily solved with having going to precision fuel and hydration, getting checking out are you a salty sweater, which you probably are, and upping your electrolyte balance and seeing if that helps. I think it's quite hard to get right. I think if you are a really salty sweater, it might be something that happens. I find if I hold, this is non, non-scientific checked, but holding my hands above my head, it also is worse if I'm using my poles because I don't think you're, the blood, you're not using your arms as much. So I try and shake my hands a bit as well. It's just a sign to me, get, uh, get some salt on board, get some more fluid on board. Don't just drink water because that doesn't help. You need salt. You need electrolyte in your water. That's really important as well. Nothing to be scared of, but it's an initial warning sign that you are dehydrated and you do need to be on top of it because it can turn into something a lot more dangerous. When I finished a spine, my fingers were so swollen that the medic, they, so when you they take you into a lovely little room and the medic just checks you're actually still alive. And she was like, oh my God, your fingers. You couldn't see my wedding ring because my fingers were so swollen. And she spent about half an hour trying to get my wedding ring off. Well, I just gave her my hand like a princess. You do it for me. First time I ever took my wedding ring off after it was put on by the priest at our wedding was after the spine. So I thought that was quite, that was okay. That was like the same. It was the same importance, my wedding and finishing. <laughs> That's fine. But yeah, I think it's easily solved with just getting your electrolyte balance as well. Nothing to be scared of, quite normal, but not a good sign. It's not It's not a tick saying you're doing everything really well. It's a sign from your body to go, I'm dehydrated. I need more salts, not more water. You need more electrolyte. So does your blood, because when you're working hard then, would your blood think we don't need our hands as much? Would that be something? We're going to lose, with? we're going to lose something. Let's lose your hands. <laughs> well, obviously it's going to go to your organs first, isn't it? It's going to yeah. keep your heart, your digestive system, everything else in your body functioning. Well, that's why you lose everything. That's why you lose things to frostbite, isn't it? As well as your extremities that mm. go first. Yeah. But why doesn't it happen when you get hypothermia? I mean, not in my record. Do you know why? Why doesn't why don't you swell if you yeah. swell? Mm, uh, maybe it does, but it doesn't normally, does it? No. Well, yeah, I was just wondering if you knew. You don't know, so no, I fail. <laughs> I think one of the key the key things with swelling in this case in terms of circulatory as opposed to um, cold is your body is pushing to in terms of the push to sur- because you're hotter um, and you're working hard the the body's pumping obviously blood out in terms of circulatory system to the to the entire body and what happens can happen in addition to what Eddie just said in terms of um, salt is. Your blood and blood can essentially not pool, but your capillaries get bigger. And therefore that's where the swelling comes because you're trying to take in more blood. That's another reason. So in obviously in terms of hypothermia, the capillaries are con- contracting. So mm. you're, yeah. you know, you're 
sending everything into into the into the core into the mm-hmm. heart to keep the core warm so the blood is actually retracting when you're running the blood is going out when you get swollen hands it's because the blood is being pushed out if you're not watching i'm doing good hand signals right? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah good hands not, not as nice hands as gary like <laughs> no they're not the lo- what yeah, does lisa not. call them your love shovels powerful, powerful. <laughs> love shovel. powerful jazz hands here <laughs> <laughs> no, you think I'd be better, but uh, another key reason um, your hands can swell is because of that. So you're getting a lot more blood um, being pushed into the extremities. The other thing I noticed with you, uh, Anita, as well, is that you say, I imagine you're doing maybe a lot more faster walking um, just because of what you said in your question. When you're doing faster walking, that can also in- make your hands swell quicker because you're not lifting your 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 arms as much. So like Eddie said, I find an, uh, an, a good way to do that is to keep to kind of put your hands over your head for a bit. It's your hands just, in the air, like you just don't care. And if you if you also um, you'll notice as well, like a lot of people will raise their feet when they come into checkpoints, when they're doing long distance events. That's all to reduce the the, the blood going into uh, into the feet to reduce swelling. So if you can, if you are walking for long periods of time, and you think about it, your arms are much more by your waist as opposed to lifting them up higher, and that that can really increase the swelling. So in your hands, long with long distance. You do walking. a lot of walking in the spine range, don't you? Why am yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> Get them yeah. above your heart, basically. That's what you're trying yeah. to do, isn't it? Get it above yeah. your get yeah. above your heart. Yeah, absolutely. So you just I think you just need breaks where you're making sure you're getting your hands. Handstands, maybe you could try as well. Um, um, but it's and it's generally it's generally uh, a couple. Of, it's it's generally those things: salt, uh, or you know, you just need to um, move your hands around a bit more and lift them up, lift them over your head. I hardly walked at all in the spine, actually, Russell. In no, in, no. you ran the whole thing. Ran average gap, <laughs> ten minute mile. <laughs> 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 August though, not long now, and eat it. Best of luck with that. Good luck. Yeah, Anita. good luck. Oh, well done. Running at 50, legend. Yeah. Hope that helps, Anita. Yeah, best of luck with your ultra, and I'll be checking. No running. If you have a question for coaches and you are Patreon, then email hello at tandtrails.com. This week's exclusive, we've managed to tie him down. Uh, main interview is with the one and only Gary Fates. Thank you, X Miles, the one stop nutrition shop, for sponsoring this incredible, groundbreaking interview. Don't forget, patrons can receive 10% off over at www.xmiles.co.uk. I notice they're looking for ambassadors for 2025 perhaps if you're at the pointy end of the field oh i'm not sure if that's what they're looking for but i'm sure they're looking for people that would use the products try test race give some feedback so pop over to xmiles if you think that could be you this week we are delighted to welcome to the podcast the one and only Gary Thwaites, the red short wearing, whoop, whoop. frumping, puking, Lakeland 100, four times Lakeland 100 finisher legend. Four now, times. caveat, you said this before because I've done some post-race traumatic interviews where your emotions are high. I don't want to say a disappointment feeling because I don't want to put words in your mouth, but there, there's there been a change in what you predicted how it was going to go so your trauma doesn't have to be our content for the podcast so if i'm honest i'd rather not do this next i know (laughs) i know so but we're here for it all we're here for the highs and the lows and sharing and often these interviews you know the ones that we've done you've done with me where you've been the sympathetic ear i poured it out feel better afterwards but also that nearly always the ones that people pull out and go to feel the feels and explain yeah. it is very hard but also like this is where people the closest relate people can have if they've done big races and things have happened in the races and they've had to rally and when you pour all your heart and soul into something 
and you don't get back what you think you should, that's that's hard. But also that's life, Gary, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. And we're always here for the learnings. And I always think how many correlations between real life and ultra running is, isn't it? And it's amazing the strength you can draw from when you have had crappy races or that you can then be like, when things don't go right, right in your life. Sorry, I know this is about you, but to go back to me. At the moment, when things are like so much, everything seems to be going not the way that I thought it would go. But I'm like, I've been here before. I've been here before in races. Yeah. I've come out of Tan Hill going, ah, 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 I can't. There's 130 miles to go. What the hell? I can't even eat the egg sandwich. But I remember that's something you said to me in Northern Traverse. You were like, we've been here before. It'll be okay. It is. It'll be okay. And yeah, you're right. You're right. You succeed. Well, succeed, you know, that's a quite a subjective definition of what success is, but you either do that, you're successful, or uh, and you learn. So fingers crossed. Always learning. There's some learnings. Oh, and yeah, be- if listeners can learn something, <laughs> if I can help them along the way. And yeah, there's someone else out there with you in the trenches feeling a bit sorry for themselves. We're here. At the We're moment. here. We're here in the trenches with you. Well, first of all, yeah, I've got to give a huge shout out. My goodness me, any event like this, and especially an event like the Lickman 50 Lickman 100, where there are so many listeners, you know, marshals, people running, supporting runners out on the course too. Yeah, we chat away to this little computer screen, these cameras, we hard to gauge sometimes exactly who and how many people we are connecting with. So yeah, times like these are special. I love absolutely, you know, above anything, I love being part of this community. And I do get asked, it does take me quite a long time to do stuff when I'm at an event, like just going to the loo, chatting with people. So I do get asked quite often, you know, does it do your head in when you come to an event? And I've got to say 100% no, it does not. Not one bit at all. I love every second of it. Okay, let's go from the start then. You, I always get confused over what you're doing when you go. You're camping, you're YHAing. Bit of both, yeah. Mm. I was YHA on the Thursday, and then yeah, they kick you out of the YHA okay. and you can camp. So the plan was, yeah, YHA Thursday, camp on the Saturday. Yeah, but you're, so you're running Friday night, sorry. So you don't really need accommodation. Then I was going to come home, but. Robbo and everybody, all the East Durham crew were staying over on Sunday night. So I thought, yeah, let's see if I can be lucky and get a bed in the YHA on Sunday night. And I did. So we stayed and had a few lovely fish and chips and some bees. So yeah, that was nice, you know, because kind of scurry off feeling sorry for yourself. It was nice to have a bit of a debrief after the race with everybody and their varying stories. So I really, really enjoy that in Conison. Yeah, it's such a lovely place to be when everybody's there with all their Lake and 50 and Lake and 100 t-shirts. It's such a buzz. Honestly, anybody who's not done it, if you just want to go, if you obviously appreciate not everybody's local, but yeah, if you can make it to Coniston, I would definitely do that. Just get, just soak it up. Esme always says the vibe, you know, the vibe of Coniston over Lake and weekend is, yeah, it's something to witness. It's awesome. But yeah, no dramas. So yeah, keep Kit check, I suppose. Do we start? Yeah, let's start kit with check. Kit check. It's always the place where the races start. It's the place where, do you get, I get so nervous for Kit check. I get the shakes. I'm like, it's almost yeah. like a, I'm about to perform at the West End feeling. Because you're like, <laughs> there's no more hiding. This is the real deal. Oh my God, this is going to happen sort of feelings. Kit check was great. You know, I always have a, what my ideal kit is in the bag. And then I've got like, I don't know, for some reason, if they go, your tights aren't Warm These enough. are women's well, 40 kind of... denier tights. You need to <laughs> up your game, Thwaites. What's your choice of calorie snack that you have to keep hidden at the bottom of your bag? I just went for what they said. Oh, I had two Snickers. I think they said two Mars bars. So I just went for two Snickers. I wasn't going to have a, a calorie count and debate with somebody. Uh, you know, it's a stress out for them. I imagine they have all kinds of bits of food, nutrition, trying to creep under the radar. So I just thought, well, that's on the list. Let's just do that. But happy days, yeah. I then pitched the tent, if that's right. I was near... Mel Sykes, actually, who has recently raced the oh, summer spine or the full summer spine, which I'm not too sure. Oh, which yeah, one, she did yeah, the great, summer you know, south challenger. Just, yeah, just relax. In complete contrast to last year where I was just like, as the hours ticked on during the day, the anxiety and the nerves and nerves, they ramped up and ramped up. But yeah, chomped away. I know you were saying that jet boil and mashed potato or dehydrated meals would not be on your menu. But yeah, that served me well. I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to go anywhere. I didn't have to queue up. I could just completely look after myself and just manage all of that. Did you have a little, you know, sleep? No, I did. I lay down. I probably had about an hour with my feet up, but I didn't. I did. I didn't sleep. Probably hadn't banked sleep, but I didn't have bad sleep over the previous previous week. I think one day my 
Sunto had said I had like 10 hours sleep. So I was like, wow. I'm never, living. never yeah. in history. I think the nice <laughs> thing about a 6 p.m. race as well is that you you don't have the night before, you don't Ooh. have that fitful, like yeah. horrible. You keep waking up at one o'clock going, oh my God, I've got two hours. Oh my God, I've got three hours. Oh, I'm going to have a good sleep. So it's like almost like you do have a proper night's sleep before, yeah. don't you? Well, as proper as you can. Yeah. Like you say, I think if it was a morning race where I was getting up super early, I don't think I would have slept a wink. And also I like the evening start. For some reason, if I just forgot some kit, I could have. Yeah, what, yeah. There's like a little... um retail tent after you've done your registration so you can go and buy some socks the Injinji people were there the Ultimate Direction people were there so you could buy oh, talking of Injinjis I put yeah. mine on for the first time this morning Beta Whoa. Sports very kindly because I said to them I would I don't have time I don't have time to put Injinji on put toe I, socks on <laughs> I don't have toe socks and um, Nix was like you try I'll send you a pet oh my gosh they were the minute I put them on Gary smooth they are oh. so comfy yeah, they beautiful. were so and they weren't as tricky to get on as i envisaged like they were easy to get on i like sensational them. sensational <laughs> i was wearing the women's trail and they like a little bit of extra padding and almost a little ankle support as well hmm. i've only done one run in them so that is as far as i'm going to go but i'm good i like the idea and anything to save my poor toenails which are still in tatters well my feet maybe get a bit hurt myself but my feet to not the most attractive, but they didn't come out of this race any worse than when they went in. I used the uh, trench foot cream too. Did you? Yeah. I yes. was just thinking when I put my Injinjis on this morning, thinking what Shane said about Northern First, the people that had the better feet were people that looked after their feet every day. But yeah. honestly, Gary, I struggled to shave my legs. I shaved my legs yesterday for the first time in about three weeks when people start making comments. So I'm like... <laughs> How am I going to look after my feet as well? But there's always time. There's always time. We can find time. Anyway, we've digressed. You're at the start line. Well, we we'll go to registration and mark. Oh, yes. And you've done the, I've never done the registration for the 50. Do they do that in Connison or did you do the big speech? I can't for it? Remember, can't remember, to be honest. No. Well, it's probably grown a hell of a lot since you were there. Yeah. In 2018, I think. But yeah. My goodness me, Mark should have a little side hustle as doing wedding speeches because he can hold a room. It's the same old routine. It's, he does amazing. You know, there's nothing. It's the same format. Apart from this year, he enrolled the power of God. Yeah, the vicar from Kentmere came up on stage and made a little speech. And I don't think I was alone. It was like, I'm not crying, you're crying moment, I oh, think. for a lot. <laughs> Well, I've got, you know, I'm not, I'm not religious. I don't have faith. But sometimes words, yeah, they do resonate with you. I think, uh, yeah, really powerful speech. And then, yeah, after the registration, you get about an hour to get your bag together and all that kind of stuff. And you hustle your way down to the front via the toilet a few times. Oh, yeah, I nudged my way down as far as I comfortably felt doing. I don't want to be that kind of dick. So, you know, sh shoulder and past people, elbow and people. They do a Nesson Dharma, a bit of ACDC. ACDC Thunderstruck? Yeah, classic. <gasps> Honestly. <gasps> He must listen to the podcast. He must know. <laughs> Dallas Cowgirls, another way. <laughs> He's a northern, isn't he? The lead singer from ACDC. Yeah, honestly, if ever a song to get you pumped and everybody on that start line, oh my goodness me. And that's why, you know, it, well, it is a fast start. You have to have a bit of a fast start to get through a certain, if you are mindful and you care about being in a bit of a conga line, you have to have a bit of a fast start of con Coniston. So yeah, that song and all the atmosphere and everyone's just pumped full of adrenaline. We're all off. We're all running up out of Coniston. Got through the first pinch point and then it is a bit of a conga line. And I don't mind, you know, in my head, I'm thinking this is good. This forces you to slow down, I suppose. It'd be very easy just to burn too many matches early on. Uh, and then you turn onto the Wollnaskar Road and it's just a lovely run down there. You kind of catch your breath. You're moving really well, moving past people. It's hard, those uphill uphill starts with big races and you're, hot, you're literally doing like a tempo 10 minutes to... Yeah. You can't... The nerves heighten the breathing and you're like... But I think it's really important to know that that won't last. Give yourself like 10, yeah. 15 minutes. And if it's still, if you're still at that tempo, then back off. But also, no, don't judge. This isn't, you're not going to run 100 miles at that pace. It's often no. just out the line, out the box and, and, and let people run away as well. I was a guy, there was a guy who ran off the front. I don't know who it was in one of the videos I saw. It was hilarious. Yeah, I did I one. That was. He did have red shorts on. I was like, is Gary like, he could have got like a tea and trail <laughs> Slow down. and just run off the front. <laughs> 
<laughs> but I was, I was mindful of this effort, and that's why I was glad we hit this little conga line. And the running on the Walnut Scar Road was quite easy. You know, Rob and I, the simple metric is, can you breathe through your nose? And can you still chat? And that was the case. Yeah, pace fell fine. We bumped into Daniel Bai, previous guest of the show. And then, yeah, we wrote it to fast. It's easy just to blow, it's easy to blow your quads early doors into Seathwaite. Check the time compared to last year. And we were just over a minute up. And if I'm honest with myself, I did hope for more. I was hoping to see like, I don't know, five minutes or whatever it was. <laughs> but in some respects, then I thought we haven't been a pair of idiots, you know, we are where we are. We've not set off too fast. Fuel and hydration, spot on. At that moment in time, I was loving life. I love seeing who you're running with uh, on the tracker. And I'm like, oh, I can imagine the conversations that are going down, all the different people we've met through the podcast and through running. And I'm, and I'm like, who? Oh, put which poor person is Gary going? So that was episode <laughs> 74, actually, when I, I really went crack. deep into <laughs> I wonder if Daniel, Daniel's cup, my goodness me, his cup was triggering me. It must have triggered him. He'd had it on his backpack and it was jingle jangling. Made a lot of noise. There's yeah, nothing <laughs> worse than a jingle jangling cup or anybody's stuff jangling or clattering next to you it's in and out seat we're topped up with just water i think i had some oh some jam roly poly or some cake oh how oh, sensational Straight early doors <laughs> <laughs> well filthy trails wow that section over to boot it's wet at the best of times i don't think i've ever seen it as filthy as that so i was surprised when we got to boot and we were just over uh, five minutes up so initially i was like oh my goodness maybe we've got we've really gone too fast over this section but last year we did a little nav uh, and we ran down the road a bit and lay in best oh you did back. yeah yeah so there was like i looked at the garmin and it was about th three or four minutes from start to finish of that era so that is where we made the time of just by purely being a bit more faithful to the actual route as opposed to running down the street. I felt awesome. Yeah, apart from, well, I think people behind me might have um, noticed a lot of flatulence at that point. And that probably was a sign of what was to, to come, really. And I felt awesome. Yeah, apart from I needed a poo. And there was no dramas. I thought it's inevitable. You're going to need a poo at some point over 24, whatever whatever hours it is, you're going to need a poo. How many, I'm curious, how many times do you think it's reason, reasonable for somebody to have a poo, if all's going well, on a 24, 100 mile race? Don't want to stick a time to it. What, what would you say was a fair? I think it's a very individual Okay. Uh, it's an, that's an individual sport of how you do. <laughs> From my, I've been running, I'm not going to throw him under a bus, but somebody I've done quite a lot of these long races close to, he does many. Okay. Um, but I'm more of a dry up girl. I, I'll struggle to okay. actually get one out. And so okay. <laughs> I, over like a hundred mile race, I probably would only do one. If that, maybe. Do you ever do Imodium? Is it Imodium that kind of... No, I never have. No, it's I've just never naturally, I think the functions of my body like go. Well, I was fighting a battle at both ends. Um, yeah, and, and I, that's early on to to start. Yeah. I don't know what it was, but yeah, I I remember at least six. And sometimes as well, the poo feeling is like, this isn't a good poo oh. feeling because <gasps> that horrible, like kind of gripey, like, is this just going to come out? And I'm not going to be able to. Control I was scared it. to pump. I got to a point. Oh, that's where I was scared it. To pump. That that's not a good feeling. That's not your everyday feeling. You don't get there's that some... when you're just working and go. Oh. There's, some ten, there's some tender areas down there. That's all. I'll, that's all I say. It was lovely coming to boot. Actually, of all the football teams in all of the boots, a pretty quiet place. There was a family, and they're all Sunderland supporters. So that was quite a nice little touch. Serendipity. These kids playing with the Sunderland tops. I enjoyed that. Oh. So yeah, heading to boot. No real warnings apart from the flatulence in the early toilet stop. Picked up some bananas and then off we go to Wasdale Head. And again, I'll say it quite a few times, I'll stop saying later on, but I was absolutely loving it. I'm never that chatty as a runner. Yeah, you don't get much crack from Gary, but it was easy to talk. Um, and also, I've not seen these trails. We just don't recce these trails because they're quite hard for us to get to from the East Coast. So yeah, we never really bother doing that. So it all felt fresh. And also at this point, you know, you've been out there for probably about three hours. So you start going past some other runners who maybe, just maybe went a little bit too quick. And it's always, it doesn't matter what point in the race it is, obviously that flips later on, but it doesn't matter what point in the race it is, go past people. Yeah, it is awesome. And reach Rasdale Head, three hours and 56 minutes. So we are now eight minutes up. So bearing in mind, I just needed to find about nine minutes compared to last year 
I was want to see Eddie. I was feeling pumped. I was like, God, my God, we are crushing I wish, this. I wish on the tracker that you could. Can we add this, please, James? You could just send me an emoji on your tracker to how you're feeling because you <laughs> you invest so much in watching people's thoughts, and you're just like, so is he happy with how he's doing? How are things going? Yeah, and it, it'd be simple, James, just to add. You know, just use the iPhone emojis. There, thumbs up, thumbs up, <laughs> thumbs down, the sick, the poo. The aubergine. Honestly, the, yeah, the aubergine. <laughs> <laughs> but I was pumped. Yeah, I knew we were quicker because last year, definitely, I remember there was me, Matt, Robbo, and a few others. Head torches came on as we came in to Wasdale. This year, yeah, we turned them on as we left Wasdale. My goodness me, I, I don't think I saved Robbo's race. Apologies if I've phrased this wrong, but Robbo kicked a rock and the rock didn't move. Oh, <laughs> and oh. Robbo was like... Robbo was like Potentially airborne, and I just managed to stick out an arm, and uh, it just gave him that split second, you know, just to get his foot down somewhere safe. And on reflection, uh, who knows what would have happened if he tumbled and took? It. We were moving quite quick coming into Wazil because the trails, you know, they open up a bit. It's not mega mega technical. It's those those are the points where you trip, actually. To be honest, always flat bit of road or a little bit of route on a nice smooth groomed trail. Yeah, those well, because we we're both really mindful of our ribs, which you know, spoiler alert. I'm not really chatted with Robbo too much about this, but I don't think he had any issues with the ribs. Ribs did not define my race. But yeah, I'm super grateful on a few fronts that I kind of stuck an arm out there and maybe I stopped him falling, I'm not too sure, because I leaned on Robbo hard <laughs> towards as the race, as the race. Uh, That's another along. emoji, the two, the dancing people, dancing girls with the bunny ears. <laughs> So how far, so Wasdale, how far are we looking? Is that about 25 miles Ooh, into the race? So 7, 14, 21 ish, I okay. suppose. I could be wrong. I could be wrong with that. So now it's Buttermere via Black Sail Pass and a lovely little river crossing too, added feature this year because of the bridge was down. And I love this section. I think for a lot of people, this is, although the climbing out of Coniston is really big, that's a big climb by the time you summit. I think most people would agree Black Sail Pass is the significant climb being towards the front at this point of the race at least you can, you know you can turn around and just see all those head torches chugging up back sail pass Best. yeah it was awesome just completely near you know chipping away nothing crazy we were chatting no issues we crossed the the river at the yh here with, with ropes you know i i love stuff like i'm 50 51 now and i still just giddy like a kid when i see stuff like that and it really reminded me i've never done it i would love to do it. oh wow i, I need to enter the ballot big time but the rookie chucky river western states nothing just to get the photo it. just to get the photo of you in that long sleeve white top coming along uh, the river honestly oh my oh, cringing every time i think about anything of my outfit but yeah i absolutely <laughs> love that bit i know i, know, I shouldn't um, be so negative i'm moving well still able to run this is always a good sign so you go past black seal pass you climb again it's not such a big climb and then you drop down into buttermere and there's a good section which annoyingly always seems to take a hell of a long time. But it is pretty good running and it's always nice. You know, you're, you're a good chunk into the race there. You've been going a good fair few hours. And to be able to run around the lake to the checkpoint, that's always a good sign. And Robert and I, you know, we could exert. Obviously, we weren't putting the same kind of pressure on as we were going up to Coniston when our heart rates were probably 140 beats. Did you have north. your heart rate, your old chorus? Um, yeah, no. big shout out, my goodness me. They don't support us in any way, but I would 100% recommend that. I, I never looked at it once and thought, oh, this, this day is iffy. 10 out of 10 for the chorus. I don't know if it's called did the it last the whole? Did it last the whole race? Yeah, 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 yeah. And spoiler two, the Sun Tour lasts the whole race. I use the, it's, you have this always on screen feature. So I turned that off. So when you flick your wrist. It oh, comes. I can't stand that. Fortunately, because I was running with Robbo, if I was having to navigate myself, not that I really need to think about the navigation too much. And then at the end of the day, when I really didn't care what speed I was going, as long as I was moving forward. Yeah, I didn't. So that maybe was more the point why it lasted so long, because I just stopped checking. I didn't care. As soon as the numbers were nasty to my eyes, I didn't like what I was saying. I just stopped looking at my watch. I think for a lot of people, they won't remember. Early Lakeland 100, you could actually go into this little village hall not anymore. Yeah, you out on the street. I think you can get hot dogs, you get loads of stuff there. But I just filled up again. I think I took some bananas and maybe that was, that might have been a little sign. I think I had my first reach, my first gag as I ate, as I ate a banana. But no, no dramas. I think, goodness me, you're shoving all that kind of stuff in your body. I was, I never thought, I never thought for one second because my memory of 2023, even though I was puking, 
my memory of 2023 isn't negative. So I think I'd Yeah, because when you said last week when we talked, you were like, I only have happy memories of it. And in my head, I was like, yeah, mm, you have blanked out the uh, <laughs> the puke and rallies, haven't you? But I, yeah, obviously, yeah. I'm not going to say that. But OK, OK. <laughs> so it had a bit of banana. How many minutes now are you up? Well, we smashed that section. Well, we smashed it. We were smashing it all the way to Braithwood because that, by the time we got to Braithwood, we made up another four minutes. So we are 16 minutes up. I did think, do we consolidate? Do we just ease off? Maybe take a bit of time at a checkpoint, you know, get the heart rate down, have some food. Rob was moving well. The flatulence, again, I need to fact check this. Was that still... Did that still go all the way with me? <laughs> Did that go all the way with me to a birth rate? I'm not 100% sure. Topped up. It's, this is, God, this is going to trigger me big time. So we got to birth rate. Again, I was just I was absolutely, I was having the time, I was having the time of my life, Eddie. I can't believe how quick things flipped. Topped up, ate some oranges. Rob was doing something. So I thought, oh, let's have a few more oranges. I started chomping on these segments. And out of nowhere, I felt my tummy turn and I aimed for the door. And one of the checkpoint team who must have been there last year said to me, do not do what you did last year. Don't puke, basically, exactly like you did last year. And as soon as... Yeah, In as a soon threatening as said, manner or was he more no, no, like no, he's concerned. Mark Becker he, kind of like, it's okay, I'll clear <laughs> up your puke, don't worry about it. <laughs> no, 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 no. He was very, he was, I think he was really concerned because he just saw, saw how quickly I turned. Um he hadn't finished his sentence, had he? And I was outside just... <gasps> Did you manage everything. to get outside? Yes, yes. Oh. Everything that was inside my tummy was now oh. on the floor. And there wasn't much, you know, you're chomping gels and chews. It's not like you've got yeah. loads in there. But uh, yeah, I thought, puke and rally, no dramas. This happened last year. Just went jogging off down the road to, I suppose, in the Keswick direction. And like I said, I wasn't too worried. But the difference was this year I had nothing to fall back on as far as liquid calories, apart from maybe Coca-Cola checkpoints, which I cottoned onto eventually. That took me maybe one or two checkpoints to realise maybe I should have some Coke because I could at I least... Love, that... I love the fact that you just get... You, whenever we get like this sick and we go to another... You, 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 you like your whole personality changes, doesn't it? And you just become useless. Oh, it takes seriously. you like probably 20 miles to go, I could have some Coke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. Well, let this memory, Lisa and I, maybe when we've been travelling with the kids and um, it settled tummies, settled the kids' tummies if they're a bit travel sick, so we get a kind of Diet Coke or something. So I thought, yeah, great, we'll have some Coke. And yeah, I could consume it, which was, I was really grateful for that because I could drink Coke. It was a minute amount of carbohydrate, but also there's caffeine in everything you're consuming as far as your calories are concerned. I think I was, I can't remember what the liquid calories were last year, but I was getting every little sachet there's about 40 grams of carb last year. So I was consistently getting a lot more than what I was in this year. So where where are you heading then towards? Blen Catherine. Catherine. Yes. Yeah, so you head out of Brithwaite. This is the only part of the course I don't really like because you're on the 66, really. I think no one's going to change the course now. But if they could, surely there's a more scenic way well, everyone's in the dark. The road's super quiet at that time of night, so maybe it's not such a big deal. Yeah, I might be remembering this wrong, but I felt like I was always gagging. Every time I tried to eat something, I was always reaching. I was just feeling shit, consistently feeling shit. But we were still chipping away the time. When we got to Blencathra, we now we were now 19 minutes up. We'd made up another four minutes. So I did need another poo at Blencathra. In some respects, I thought, I'm just going to go in this toilet, sit here for a few minutes in my yeah, own thoughts. Yeah, I'm going to try and reset. Um, and we still had loads of time in the bank, so I was not worried. 90 minutes up, although I was being sick and feeling sick and gagging every time I put something in my mouth, I wasn't too worried. But I think going to Dock Rear, that was definitely looking at times. And this is when I stopped really looking at times. That was the beginning, the beginning of the end. Why Why was it the beginning of the end? Is it just the calorie defi defi deficiency caught up with you? Yeah, well... Basically, I couldn't eat the the real struggle. I did eat some. To say I didn't eat the many is a, is, is a lie. I did eat some of the precision fuel and hydration chews. I couldn't. Oh god, a caffeine gel. Oh my god, the thought of that's making me puke. You know, but, you're talking to somebody who I am reliving. I am actually sitting here with the slight vomit feeling, but I am just feeling every inch of this and that feeling of running along a road when you feel so sick and you're gagging as well, and it's a bit endless and. Oh. And you've got lovely Robbo next to you who you're just like, 
feeling like it's not like you're by yourself either. You're with a buddy and yeah. you're just like, I'm sorry. Oh, oh. And they're like, kind of started... and they're going, what do I do? What can I do? And like, I don't think you'd ever heard me. You know, you talk when I've talked to said about my 20, 23 Lake Lunar and I said I was sick. I don't think you really appreciate it until you run with somebody and every time they try and put something in their mouth, it's just like, uh, and, and it's, it's... you just dry heaving. So with the salt tablets, I couldn't, I couldn't really take salt tablets anymore. And again, I'm trying to fact check this in my head, but I know by the sheer amount of salt tablets I brought back, I obviously Nothing. was not, yeah. not eat, no. eating enough. Gels would... And normal gels would go down, but the problem with this, and this is where I really started to hemorrhage fuel, I'd have to go to a walk and I'd literally just secrete a millimetre of gel at a time. Mm. And then it would, and then it would the take And the focus me. it takes to swallow it and be like, oh. I need this. I must swallow this. We'd, and you'd have a system. Everything I'd... in your system's going, reject, <laughs> reject. <laughs> so I'd have to like have a gulp of water and then try and eat something and swallow everything together. That was okay. But the problem with eating, it was taking me so long and it was t to a point where I just finished something and then my watch would beep to remind me to eat again. Anybody out there, fellow vomiters, or anybody that finds themselves in this position, that is your job. You, when you get to this point of like such bad, the stomach's gone, the calories are not going in, there's no point. You cannot reject. You have to slow down and you have to just spend, instead of t focusing on your splits, trying to get just a tiny bit of energy because once you can get a little bit in, if you're going to turn it round, that's the only way you're going to turn it round to set yeah. up the stomach is actually getting something in it. And that, and, and, but it has to be like little tiny bits. So, so where'd you stand on eating your own vomit to keep things in? Because that's what I'd resorted to. Yeah. You was... ended up, you end up swallowing it back down, don't you? It yeah, comes it up. Carrie, believe you me. Disgusting. As, a, as now you've joined the full on vomiting <laughs> club. I've I've been there. It's come back up and I've been like, nope. You were going straight back down. Oh, oh my God. I remember that bit in Northern Traverse um, as you're heading down into Reith and it's like a really runnable downhill track. And it's about, must be like five miles. It's probably about 500 metres, but it seemed about five miles. <laughs> and it took me the whole time to get like the smallest gel you know, one of those 30 grams of gels and it took me about two hours and every time it would come back up and I'd be like, you just got to stay, you just got to get down. And it's just awful. How anyway. come you can eat sick and not an orange segment? I can't understand yes. it. <laughs> it's like, it doesn't make any sense to me at all. <laughs> I'm proud of you that you kept trying to hit the fruit, the fruit. Oh. Was that helping? Well, it wasn't making it any worse. Yeah. Maybe it was the acidity and it but um yeah. eventually we got some watermelon. I think that was Mardale and I was I, I was visualizing that because again I remember last year watermelon at Mardale was almost like a reset for the palate. I'm not too sure mm. why, but I felt mm. I came out of Mardale last year just feeling transformed. Well spoiler that wasn't, that wasn't. That wasn't the so case. we're getting to Doc Ray. You're getting to Doc Ray. What you yeah, said and that's you, lost, the, your, that's you the, lost your splits card. Oh yeah, oh, that's well. In a way, it was good because that would have just been bad noise in my in my ears. I reached down for the splits just to just to check them off for Robert. To be honest, I didn't really care at that point, but yeah, it wasn't there anymore. So we were blissfully unaware of where we were compared to last year. Obviously, you know, we say when you get to Dalemane and if you're at a certain time, you're behind schedule. But it was really good when it was positive signals to have this split card because it was yeah. really boost. Always nice when it's positive. <laughs> and when it's not working, throw it away. It's a real boost for me. I, I, I don't really spend much time in the checkpoints and I was a bit spaced out then. So apologies if um, I wasn't that chatty. But yeah, getting to the hardmost checkpoint to Dock Rear was great. Uh, and so Tim, Tim Taylor too, he was there. It was nice to see Tim. But yeah, I wasn't very chatty. I was just in and out. That's where I probably let myself down. I think maybe I should just go. A look, reset. Give me, yeah. Give myself sit. 10 minutes. Have a cup yeah. of tea. Yeah. And that is something I would do for next year. I always assume I'm not going to eat from the checkpoint. So I won't need to lean on my mug. I need to put some that somewhere a bit closer because when I'm in the dumps... I don't want, I want zero faff and I'm not reaching for that cup. So have that somewhere a bit easier to, to, to grab hold of. And I might have just, I remember, was it um, Emma Stewart when she was puking, somebody gave her some soup and then she transformed after that. And I do this. think that you just have got, you thrown your time out the window. You should chuck your splits card away. And I do think having... I chuck uh, it away. <laughs> lost it. Having, uh, you lost it. Um, <laughs> giving yourself like the time's gone out the window, but saying, right, I'm going to sit here until I've got, 
some calories down me, they're yeah. not going down when I'm moving. And I've learned that the hard way that you, you, you do hemorrhage the time then, but you're going to enjoy what you yeah. can salvage from the race a little bit as well. Um, so Robbo's feeling fine. Do you tell him to leave you? Leave me, save yourself. Well, early on, Robbo, I'm pretty, again, I need to, it's, it's, it's so hard. Like my memory of events, how I, I remember things that might be different how Robbo remembers uh -huh. them. But... You're like one of those strictly come dancing <laughs> professionals, aren't you? That are like, that's not the way it happened. I was really supportive. She's remembering it differently. <laughs> but I do have memories a few times early on, Robbo saying, you know, you go, guys. It's fine. I think going to Black Sail Pass, he thought it was a bit spicy. The pace. But definitely later on, the dial moved over to me to say to Robbo to, yeah, you just, you just leave me now. But not once. I never got, I never got anything that... He was like, oh, for fuck's sake, you know, I've got to stay with this dickhead. He's, he's amazing. He's fallen the, the pieces. Left yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> and that, you know, it just became a real attrition. Robbo started nursing me, you know, if I needed to get my poles. So I picked up my poles. Thankfully, I had my poles. So let's get, back. let's just sort, because I need to work this through in my head. So we're getting to, to, to so we're, you're leaving Docre and then the next place is Dalmain. Dalmain, yes, we're at Dalmain. And I never, I've got to say this from the off, even though you said, and you rightly saw, Time had completely gone out the window. I'd given up on that. I think that's fair to say. I never, ever once thought about quitting. That never, even when I was feeling absolutely appalling, I just thought if I can just keep chugging along. And that is, that's a real I'm clear. I'm still a contender. <laughs> still a contender. Well, you're chasing the slate. You know, that's that's always the, kind of, well, the motivation is to get to the end of the challenge. That That's fundamentally it. But yeah, when you've got this slate, Fingers are you running? Are you running still here or a thing? Yeah, Robbo's, this is again, classic reverse tactic. So when we've done, say, races like Howard Hobble, I've always said to Robbo, when we've been competitive, I'm like, when they walk, we just run for 10 seconds. Well, mate, it's just little, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll jog to the, to the stone. We'll walk this bit. We'll run to the tree. Just little tactics like that. And Robbo was trying that. Yeah, quite relentless. And I was just like, nah, nah. Well, we were, yeah, I, to say we weren't running is, uh, that's not true. We, I'm pretty sure there was sections of it, but any kind of incline, I was just like, hallelujah, I can, I can walk now. <laughs> and how is your mental state now, almost halfway? How are you feeling like in your head? Because I know when the last few races, when I've got myself in this terrible pickle, that my, me my like mental dialogue is not a positive, happy place to be with myself. Yeah, that's a really good question, actually, Eddie. Um, oh, thanks. I love it on podcasts when we go, <laughs> oh, my gosh, that's a really good question. Thanks. And it's normally because they're biding time because they're like, I don't know. <laughs> Thank you. Well, like I said, I wasn't ever thinking about quitting. I was no, really, no. I was but really mine isn't quitting. Mine is nearly always like, you are useless heard of a person and all that training and you're just puking <laughs> no i was just yeah a bitly disappointed i'm still yeah very very bruised from that but no i think i was just upset you know it wasn't panning out the way it was but unlike i think uh the 20 i'll go 2022 i think i watched juggies in a drift off into the distance my my, my own Self-talk there was like really super ne negative. I did not enjoy that. Maybe that is, you know, because I had Robbo and although there wasn't much chat, you know, I wasn't, Robbo was trying his best. He was even asking me general knowledge questions. Like, I, I, all the, you know, I can't remember what it was. I'm blanking on what it was, but yeah, he was using, he's doing all his best little tactics just to keep me going. But I think it was just, we picked up a guy called Martin actually at Dalemead. So I'm always aware and I don't want other people to struggle, but I do know it's not just me. You know, you're 60 odd miles oh, in your Oh, misery loves company. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that, is that when you you'll just feel a bit more, oh, you're having a bad day, me too. There's something in it, isn't there? But yeah, what a legend, Rob. Honestly, he nursed me. He nursed me to the end. He would take my, he put my poles in, even though this instinct belt is really good as far as like getting your bits in and out. I was just like aimlessly stabbing myself in the back with my lucky paws. So Robbo would like just take them out. He'd get my waterproof jacket out for me. He just really makes you a, a couple of percent of a load off me. And I think that was a big help. And I just think that distraction of having Robbo and Martin around, I don't remember m like massive negative self-talk, just apart from like the natural disappointment. I've got to say, you know, Robbo completely selfless. He had his goals for that day. You know, it wasn't just me out there chasing this sub-24. Robbo had some lofty goals too. And he sacrificed everything just, just to make my journey just that 
just a tiny bit bearable and just to get me to the end. And I never once felt any pressure. You know, he talked about at the end, he wished we could have been under 25 hours, you know, 25, 59, whatever. That would look nicer on a bit of paper. And I, I get that. Goodness me. I 100% understand where he's coming from. But yeah, proper, proper legend. And it just seems really fitting of all the years to have a wingman. It's the year they've got the top top gun theme yeah and fucking hell if ever i needed a wingman like literally <laughs> sometimes i just feel like going you know like when, when you're in the dumps you literally don't want anyone around sometimes you want to be in your but you said misery loves company but sometimes you don't want any company but i never once felt like that um he never the energy he gave me all the time was 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 positive encouraging you know we said about uh, you and Bryn earlier he's bringing half stepping you on a run i never felt like robert was like 500 meters in the distance and hand on his hips looking back at me like come on you like i would have been basically is what you're saying isn't it yeah <laughs> i never felt like that once and like i say he 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 and this is where i think it's it's more special these big long races your good days don't come around often. And for him to basically wave it goodbye just so I could get to the end, uh, yeah, I'll be grateful, eternally grateful for that. He made a really nice, really bad experience oh, tolerable yeah. by having a little bit of love there and somebody yeah. having your back a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Down into Howtown, how much was run between uh, Pooley Bridge and Howtown? Well, it's lovely once you've done the climb. There's a little bit, I need another Yeah, it's that little bit downhill towards the checkpoint and then that horrible little out and back when you're like, oh, oh, oh my God, it's filthy that is. But the poles are out then for the climb. Fusedale. And because I'm not chasing times at this point, I didn't really mind the climb out of Fusedale. It's a, it's a like nice climb, isn't it? Like if you're yeah. not trying to do it with effort. Yeah. It's not super steep. It's like just a bit, it's a bit endless, isn't it? It's a pain in the butt though. If, you, if you're maybe new to the course and you think you've summited and then you mm. see you see the actual summit a bit further corner. on. <laughs> but that was filthy. Oh, wow. So I, goodness me. So I slipped. So we've gone over Fusedale. That's again, probably the wettest I've seen coming down towards Hall's Water. That was just filthy, boggy, slippery. And, you know, even though... We, I, I was hemorrhaging time. We were still untrampled trails, I suppose. The 50 runners have not come past you yet. No, no one yet. Can no, you imagine no there's two, how many 50 runners was there? 1,050 runners down that 2, trail? I'm pretty sure there's over 2,000. Two, no, 2,000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there was 800 starters in the 100 and about 2,000 in the 50. How many people turned up, actually? I'm not too sure how many people actually toured the line. This is where my mind boggles because you've had since Dale, since Dale Mail, and I think they run you around the field a bit. You've gone through Pooley Bridge, you've gone to Howtown, you've got a huge climb up to Fusedale, and still that trail around Horswater was like single file conga. How people, well, they probably didn't, to be honest. I, I slipped off the side. It's got like a little kind of steep drop, which is hidden by ferns and stuff like that so yeah i slipped off once and robo um, helped me back to my feet but yeah that i think that i fell been... on that that was the end and that's really near the start i absolutely yeah. smashed my knee when i did the 50 on oh. that the pain the pain but and that was dry i don't remember it being super wet and that was back in when that would i definitely was pretty much by myself around there yeah. by then already can't imagine running it one really muddy and then also with so many people like but the problem with that is sometimes i felt when you get too close to somebody you can't see the trails that yeah. you're about to, to 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 run over so that single file traffic around uh mardale yeah do that not enjoy be. that gary i don't enjoy that in a race especially yeah. on i wouldn't call it technical but on like where you need to see your feet the pressure and some people are faster at it than other people and bleh. the photographs and a little bit of feedback that was quite congested yeah yeah so heading into mardale mardale I've only ever heard the amazing um, recounts of Mardell checkpoints of because it's in a really deep place in the hundred when you are. Yeah. It's quite a long way actually from Dale Main, which is like I know you've got Howtown, but is quite a long way yeah. to like civilization round to Mardell, and you've done a really like brain hard work on your brain section. How are you feeling getting into Mardell? Is this where the Coke started? You were like, okay. I can t if I can drink Coke, I can get this done. They get watermelon at Mardale, had the Coke. No, I'd already started the Coke call. I'm okay. pretty sure. I think so, at least. Um, But this is where I think I'm really fortunate. There's people at the Mardale checkpoint who are T and Trails fans. And um, there's pictures, you wouldn't know. You see the pictures of me and Mardale. 
I'm actually smiling. No, I don't look- no, I know, Gary. I was <laughs> like the pictures of you. I you can tell in like your eyes, they're like okay. sunken. <laughs> I was concerned, and there were and because the signal's not great in the Lake District, this is where I need my emojis because the signal's not great, so you don't get a lot of that social media feedback. Because I was like, I know people will post on Facebook when you come yeah. into the checkpoints, but there's no signal, and so it was delayed. But then what I did see. Uh, you know, I was like, oh, my love. <laughs> <laughs> but I did get a lot of love and attention. I felt spoiled in my deal. So, yeah, big boost. All those, because even when you're moving slow, I don't know, maybe two hours max. Nobody cares. Nobody cares what pace you're doing. They just want to see you. No. And in some ways, arriving into checkpoints, being needing the checkpoint, people much, much, if you're volunteering yeah. at a checkpoint, that is much more fun than someone coming in and just being like, fill up the flask and gone. You're like, yeah. you much, you want to, as a volunteer, you're there to give the love and to be able to help somebody out is like, you feel like you've, you've got your purpose there then, don't you? Did you try my ginger rolls? Caffeine extra no. shot? <laughs> uh, well, there you go. If you, you're an idiot. <laughs> That would have made all the difference. But I'm just kicking myself that. And, and this is something I will, I'm fortunate, you know, I'm going to try it again in 13 Valleys. Well, not try again for probably 24 hours, but I get the chance to try and tweak a few things because now I'm like blissfully unaware. If I was just unlucky, Tommy turned for whatever reason, or like say last year where we thought it was this constant carbohydrate, electrolyte imbalance. So maybe I can lean a bit more on some liquid calories too. So yeah. If anybody's out there, yeah, take it. Couldn't speak in your drop bag. Always tell when sachets. Well, I know uh, precision fuel and hydration. They do uh, like a electrolyte, an energy drink now, a carb drink. So there are other brands. Whether you get that, I think Tailwind. Yeah, they. Do, it's pretty much their USP is that's all you need during the race, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Mm. So yeah, maybe. I, yeah, maybe as a, maybe as a plan B. Basically, whatever you can stomach. Like yeah, just, just get something down. Big shout. Sorry, big shout out to the Mardil team got a lot of love got a lot, lot of love a lot of and love and then straight like out of Mardell you're going oh yes Garth <laughs> rock, r- a rocky mother oh. pulls out yeah Lecky pulls out straight away for that one that's steep sure that's steep yeah. isn't it yeah okay, because it, it's steep it's big but this might maybe sound like a bit of a dick but when you're doing the bob and stuff like that it's not massively long no. I mean it feels yeah. a lot longer when you're on it it's not you know you're working towards the top once you start it you must have felt like crap. <laughs> Robbo said he thinks we moved quite well up there. This could be a blurred memory. I need to fact check. I'll fact check all. I'll find it all tonight. All out tonight down the pub. But he seemed to think we moved okay up there. And then it's yeah down to. Well, ultimately you're yeah, running down to. I love Trout. that descent off the top, off down, off to down into Stratford. Well, it's a pain in the ass them. because it's you can't really take your eyes off the ground. It's quite technical. It's not really. For people like me, anyway, it's not really runnable. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, it was great. When did you meet Rich McDowell? Because of the picture of you is hilarious. Oh God, he looks so grumpy. What the? I think it? he came to find you. Um, yeah, 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 what a superstar, yeah. honestly. I must have tortured him because Rich is smoking fast and then to see this uh, walk and wounded coming in. I like, this is my long run, guys. This is the slowest <laughs> long run I've ever done. <laughs> yeah, I can't put this on straw. <laughs> When did it, I? It was somewhere in between Troutbeck and Ambleside. My crack isn't great at the best of time, but when I'm. We all know that. You don't need to apologize. <laughs> if someone's wondering who the hell is this Richard McDowell guy, go back to Run to the Hills, smoking fast. <gasps> smoking fast. Run. He's the initiator of the vapor flies with the uh, trail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> the trail soul. He is a smoking fast, but smoking I find him an inspiration well. because he's yeah, not, a, you know, he's, he's not 20 year old. He's a, he's yeah, a brilliant middle aged man, rocking it, mm-hmm. absolutely crushing it. Yeah, it was great to see Richard and every, anyone who I saw out on the course, to be honest. Yeah. Kudos. I appreciate all the efforts that people came along. Not just to say hello to me, but it was uh, maybe a nice coincidence. But yeah, I really appreciate all that. Like I said earlier, I never get tired of bumping into listeners, <laughs> even in my even in my darkest hour. <laughs> oh. Coming down to, towards Ambleside now, are you stopping feeling sick, vomiting, and just, just a shell oh, God, of no. yourself? No, no, no. There was a moment where I don't think I was, I wasn't puking everything up. Everything I tried to eat, I was gagging and then so the physical vomit probably didn't happen too much nothing but there. i just i just wasn't um yeah nothing there and i but the main problem was 
when it started going bad from for argument's sake, say Blen Catherine Centre onwards, I was probably on about a third of the fuel. And I remember Robbo said going over uh Fusedale, your bag's heavy. And that is literally because I just had about two kilos of carbohydrate, which well not two kilos, but a lot of carbohydrate which I just hadn't hadn't eaten. But um yeah, Rockstar, you feel like anyone who comes into Ambleside at a reasonable time of day, you know, if you go through there, whatever, two in the morning, maybe it's a bit different. But fortunately, if you're in daylight, yeah, you feel like a proper, proper rock star. No checkpoint, Faf. You know, um, again, this is what I'm thinking. I'm going to alter a bit of 13 Valleys. I saw a picture of Mark Derbyshire, not for this race, on a different race. He's sitting eating having a sandwich and I'm thinking, why am I being a dick? Literally filling my bottles up and getting out as quick as possible when the course record holder sitting having a sandwich. If people ever think, I hear this sometimes whispers that, you know, people at the sharp end don't carry the kit. Mark Darby should cross that line with his waterproof trousers on. He he carrying... must have been in a terror. I don't think I've ever seen him not in shorts and a vest. <laughs> the guys at the pointy end definitely, definitely have their kit. I thought that was a great message to see that someone there right at the sharp end, you know, he'd be mindful of the record and he's still man managing himself well, People like me don't manage themselves so well when the chips are down. <laughs> yeah, this then, is what I'm getting from this, Gary. Is that, and I think, but I think I learned it, didn't I? I had a couple of races where the puking was so bad, and I tried to keep pushing on and pushing on without sorting it. It's really hard when you're a racer, even though you're not racing anybody really but yourself. Yeah, at these checkpoints to stop and put on your mothering hat and go. I need to. Stop stop i need and i think that's the only way when yeah you can puke and rally like if you'd puked um where was it a dock ray and then you'd come out and gone i feel better sometimes you just need a reset and a cleanse of the palate but when you've got yourself in that cycle of the stomach and everything just keeps coming up i think yeah. you have to take a big um ego swallow and it's yeah. not an ego as in like, oh, you know, uh, it's more like yourself. You need to turn the, and it's hard. You have to turn off this, the side of your brain that's saying, go, 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 go. And say, I've got to stop and I've got to let this die down yeah. a little bit. Maybe I should have done that blank after when I was 20 minutes up. There was major warning signs, but we still had 20 minutes to play. I should have, on reflection, and this is where I'm I'm really fortunate that, well, to be honest, the thought of running for 115 miles in Lake District again at the minute is quite triggering and I'm not too sure I've got the mental capacity to go again or push again, but I have got the opportunity to take five at a checkpoint, have a cup of soup. I've bored my wife endlessly with this. All Boring. county tops. <laughs> oh, Eddie, no, not today. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we're going for about an hour actually. But so... All county tops, nine hours, red hot day. I was scoffing sandwiches and malt loaf mm. at Cockley Beck. Exactly the same nutrition plan. So after, when you get to Cockley Beck, probably seven hours. No, oh, well, I was longer in hot, scorching conditions than twice now on the Lakeland 100, where I've got to Braithwaite in the middle of the night, relatively cool, and I puked. So it didn't happen. And all, all of my training runs, if I've done a big six-hour day, for example, I've used the same kind of fuel, fueling plan. And probably your training days, because you haven't got countless legs, miles in your legs, you probably run those a bit faster too. So I, I remember- you, Gary. I hear you talking to some, there isn't an answer because no. everybody says this goes, nobody gets sick in training. The nutritional yeah. works. It's got to do, it's got to be like going through the night- so that's an, a variable, hormone related, stress related, the pressure. Yeah. It's a cauldron of many things, I think, that you can't recreate in training. But don't, I don't like to hear this like negativity of, I don't, I don't think we need to talk about 13 Valleys. Don't think about that. You've yeah. got to process this first before you even, you go there. So don't think, oh my God, oh my God, this is going to happen at 13 Valleys because we'll have strategies in place. I'm here for you. We're all here for you. <laughs> but, but you don't also don't, don't, I wouldn't even think about it. I think you just, you still process, you're still not sure what happened here. <laughs> Let's face it. Really not um, sure. Okay. So Ambleside to, I was like looking at your splits when you came into Ambleside and I think it was about 20 hours that maybe you were, in okay. there and I was thinking okay because it's hard to tell I obviously didn't know only got those few pictures that picture from Rich saying you weren't feeling great that like so what's happening what's happening out there man 
that section to chapel style is a beast because nothing happens. It's like... Look, get, but on paper, you think once you've gone over Lothrig, Lothrig Fell, that's quite runnable. So Oh, yeah. But don't you think that's the worst when you're not feeling good well, as yeah, well? Because it's and this just is where like, Robert was like, we jog a bit, walk a bit, we jog a bit. And, jog like, a bit. and in your head, you're like, jog a bit. And you're like, I because you feel your tummy and it's like, I don't... I but sometimes, you know, I've done, I've done, I've done reckeys to Coniston from Ambleside, and they are a breeze. That is like, oh, I know, I hear you, brother, <laughs> and you're like three hours thirty, three hours forty five. Yeah, like I yeah, got yeah. this, and this is really easy running and nice hiking, and the descending's relatively easy. Yeah, and yeah, but well, all can... the way until you climb out of the Langdales, there's nothing significant, is there? Really. But there is when you've got all those miles in your legs and you're not feeling good. There is actually quite a lot of sneaky little ups that yes. are just beasts. Um, and it's quite so, rocky, some of the trails. So they're not yeah, they're rocky, really yeah. runnable. Yeah. But I it's great. You. Chapel style. That would be Angela Green. Is that the Star one in the Wars. field with all, where you see yeah. from quite? Yeah. 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 It was great. So it's great to see Angela. And normally I think I'm quite chatty and happy when I come in checkpoints. Are I you? just think I was. Really? Yeah. Exactly. Like kind of. That's what you give out to the public. <laughs> and I just fine. see the real Gary. <laughs> but there was nothing. So. Yeah, oh. apologies for that. I don't think any of the hundred runners going into Chapel Style are giving out, you know, West End movie <laughs> star vibes as they go in. I think most people are dead behind the eyes by then. Well, yeah, I don't think any year when I've done the Lakeland 100, I've not really spent too long at Chapel Style or Ambleside. I tend to spend a little bit longer at Ambleside because that's where Lisa would pop up. Luckily, I had a good friend at the end because, uh, yeah, I needed I needed a cuddle at the end, let's, let's say. Mm. But yeah, through Chapel Style, great to see Angela. I'm just a Sorry, I wasn't more present. That I couldn't engage and chat and um, whatever, whatever, whatever it was I would maybe normally do. But yeah, headed out. Next stop, Tilbethwaite. That's hard. That climb up out of Tilbethwaite is. Well, that's when I really struggled. I'm amazed. For one, I'm amazed. I was mindful. This could be my uptight northerner bringing, like, kind of being drummed into me. If I owe someone some money, like, there's a phrase. I'm not, I'm not too sure if you know this phrase, but your name's in the window, so you really don't want to feel like you. Or anyone, anything. So I was super mindful that five pounds goes in the pot to Tilbethwaite for the charity. And yeah, I couldn't, I'm sure I heard, I didn't make it into the tent for the presentation. I was there in the field, but I couldn't get in. It was so busy. I think they raised four thousand pounds at that checkpoint wow. for charity. And then the Lakeland 100 people, they double it. Yeah, amongst all the mist, I was like, get the fiver in the pot. <laughs> I uh, saw some friends there, which is good. Oh, Checkpoint, you know, people I know uh, through the podcast, they were man in the Checkpoint, which is all, always awesome. And I think then I remember really kind of struggling to stay on my feet. Thank goodness the off-label use for your lecky Paul, because I think I'd have really struggled, Denny. To be honest, if, if from that point on, I was not steady on my feet and I how you. I made it. Oh, God. How they I made don't, it. You, they don't use that in their advertising campaign, do they? They don't <laughs> use you that actually if they took your lecky poles away from you, if someone came and kicked them out from under you, you literally wouldn't be able to stand up. You only see Killian or whoever like running up a mountain using them yeah. as like <laughs> ski poles, basically. But actually, 99% of us on uh, these longer races are using them as stability z- zimmer <laughs> I don't frames. Think- there's any chance of me making it on the Licky marketing campaign. So most of Jacob Leader is actually at the top of Jacob's Ladder. And I'm just amazed I didn't roll back down to the bottom. I'm like the Travelator or it's on Gladiators. It was a struggle. That was a struggle. <gasps> it was just a death march, death march out after that. But my trend was holes out on the climbs and put them out, put them down the descents. But it, like Robbo was like all ready to pack them away from me. But I was like, no, I can't. I can't let go of these Robbo. Literally, I need them. Don't, Robbo, don't take them from me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we made it down. Then, yeah, we're coming into Coniston. You eventually get off the technical stuff and you hit the kind of miners' road into Coniston. And it is a wonderful, I think, Robbo again will probably correct me tonight. Um, I think I might have run a bit of that. Pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> All those treadmill sessions, those efforts, they paid off as you hit the road. <laughs> High fived a few people. I think there's some kids in the pubs and stuff like that. I literally want to crawl under a rock and never see anybody ever again. But to see the finish line, I've never been so exhausted in a race. I've never been so relieved to see a finish line again. Robert wanted us to all cross the line together like wingmen. And I was just like, 
Nah, <laughs> I couldn't do anything. I just put this moment. I'm sorry, Robo, if you're listening to this, but uh, yeah, I've never been so grateful to see to see the finish. And they nurse you, you know, they nurse you once you once you get to the end. They really kind of just gently ease you into that tent because it is a bit of a rush. And I saw some video. I randomly. How I, someone said, oh, if you can be like bothered, basically high five the kids. There were some kids that had been, must have been hanging around for ages, wishing to finish. And I just see myself go around high five these kids. I'm thinking, yeah. literally, I, I've not eaten for 12 hours. Why can I do, <laughs> Why can I do this? I saw, which is, you know, talk about need and need a cuddle. I saw Susan Chambers and Jamie, one of our listeners. I've known Susan for a long time, Hard Mowers and the Northeast Marathon Club. It probably was up there with the top three hugs. Best hugs ever in my life. No, it doesn't be our Middleton hug <laughs> when you came out. No, no. <laughs> well, it was just, you know, I obviously looked like I really needed a cuddle. Um, you did. She was there. You I did. had no, you know, obviously Rob was around and stuff like that, but. He'd had enough of you, basically. He was like, my job there is done. He's here, He's, guys. I, I'd scurried off to the tent eventually. I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. I went to the tent eventually and an ambulance had turned up. When Robbo thought, God, Gary's gone. And, and, and I, I was snoozing in the tent, so I wasn't re- answering any WhatsApp messages and that. So, yeah, he was, I don't think he slept that well because he was concerned about his. You about are a high book. needs runner. <laughs> but the worst, I'm literally, he's like immortalized. You can't get rid of them. The worst finishing photographs ever. I don't know if you've seen them. Oh, he's Robert n- looks great. Let's just focus, focus yeah. on him. He looks great. Honestly. <laughs> It does look sensational. I'm like, oh, there. God, well, but I tell you what, I know we're always. I'm always like you. I look back on my finishing photos, the traverse and the spine, and we look at them going, "Why are we worried about what we look like? Because we've just True. been through what we've just achieved is absolutely incredible. We should look terrible. Yeah, we should yeah. look like you know we've been run over. We've been to. I don't like to say we've been to war, you know, we, but we, we fought ourselves. We fought against ourselves for hours and hours and hours. We fought the weather. We Everything has been thrown at us, metaphorically and literally. We've come out the other side. And frankly, if you don't look absolutely destroyed and battered in your finish line photo, have you done it right? That's what I would like. <laughs> Just, uh, well, there's no, you know, there's definitely... No questions. There was nothing left in the tank. It wasn't my race, but yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't look at those photos and go, "Oh yeah, I could have went a bit faster." I'm looking pretty. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. But it, it should be. You should look at those photos and go, "I did that against yeah. all odds. I did that, and that's what it looks. That's what being, you know, committed, being dedicated. That's what that looks like. That's yeah. much more real and a proper photo than somebody that stopped to put makeup on." <laughs> And it's that's true, Gary. I know that is true. People do do that. Oh my goodness, me! I do normally have a little freshen up with a buff before the finish line. But I don't even think <laughs> just get the it. salt off my face. But uh, not to, yeah, big thanks to Susie. You know, I was sitting there on the seat, wishing. I'm very, you know, we made a decision, Lisa and I, and the family, not to. We go to Finland, so we didn't want to stretch ourselves thin with uh, just time away. Yeah, big year for me. Obviously, going to uni, so we didn't do that. I was so lucky at, at the spine. I had Bryn, but at the traverse, I didn't have Bryn. But I yeah. knew that you and Hills were going to be there. So yeah, it, like you just need somebody that gets it that you can just. The heartbeats are there. Yeah. They're matching heartbeats. And well, Susan, yeah, she's been in the trenches, and Jamie too. You know, both of them being in the trenches. But yeah, it's lovely words, timely cuddles. As I was, um, yeah, <laughs> timely cuddles. Cu- she completely cooked and sobbing, sobbing like a baby. Oh, <laughs> well, it's a release, isn't it? Um, of course, a- you've had to. You've been through something that is traumatic in the in the senses that it was. It was you were fighting every instinct to stop, but also the kind of like done it i've done it and it was questioned about when you're going to do it Susan, remind me there's it's been a lot has happened to my dad passing and i don't think i'll struggle here but i don't think i've really properly grieved that um if, yeah i really don't think i have so moments like that when you it's know, raw. You just it's real yeah, it's raw yeah. there's no filters it just um it, it came out but that yeah that was my lakeland and, Lake. and neil just scoffing the buffet like <laughs> showered <laughs> i'm so pleased he had a i think last year yeah i'm not too sure exactly what happened last year when we parted ways at um Braithwaite last year 
he didn't have a great night. And then one of our other mates, Gary, spoiled and picked him up at some point. Bumped him. He's a 50 runner, so he picked it, he bumped into him and then they came in together. So yeah, Gary helped Neil last year and Neil paid it forward this year and helped me. But I can't thank him enough, you know. He does remind me quite a few times that we've done races together. Health Hobble is a good example. All County Tops a couple of times. The shoe's been on the other, other foot. So yeah, fair enough. But completely selfless, like I said. My crack was shit. His crack is always funny. He's so like, oh my goodness me, Neil, he's always just hilarious to be around. I love his company, Martin too. All the way from Dale, man, to the finish. And yeah, apologies, guys. There was some slow. I think Martin was in the trenches too. You know, like I said, he's a spoken fast runner, but stayed with us all the way from Dale Mill. Robbo nursing both of us. <laughs> but, but Robbo must be exhausted. <laughs> and I, I, I feel like I should say, as always, you know, in my opinion, no one does it better than Mark Lithuit and his Lakeland 100 team. And this is not my idea. This is somebody mentioned it to me in the youth hostel over breakfast the following day. Maybe there's a shout out um, when the king does his honours. The money that Epic Kids... Epic events, sorry, raises over the years and the work that Epic Kids does in the community. Yeah, surely, surely he's on somebody's radar. And I know I've heard it officially, Camilla and Charles. Do listen to the Tea and Trails podcast. <laughs> Huge fans. <laughs> it's always blasting out of their Alexa dot. It's the first thing they do on a Friday is download, download the tea. Cup of tea, tea, nice cup of tea. They have the breakfast first, see to the garden, and then they come in at about 11. <laughs> Okay, I'm in okay, it for the kudos yeah. and the aubergine chat. That's why I do it, basically. But uh, yeah, I don't think Mark is. And it would be great to see some recognition for that awesome, awesome work. I should acknowledge some of the people that have supported my endeavours. Team over Ready? a beat and run. Am I top? Oh. oh, okay. So I'm good. <laughs> well, Eddie, I've got to say, you know, this has been... You are always a good idea. I absolutely love sharing the mic for you. So, Gary, oh my gosh. You did not... You are the king of... Eddie having emotional <laughs> breakdowns and you going, ah. well, yeah, you interact. I just go, oh, shit. <laughs> I feel like I've had a bit of therapy. Please, so I appreciate it. <laughs> please, oh. I appreciate, I appreciate you being a good idiot today. But yeah, kit wise, like I said, thank you to everyone who supported me. Instinct reflex belt. Apart from it made me look, I didn't really like my little muffin top in the photographs when everything was bloated, but five stars as far as... You didn't get the, I told you the week before, you need to, you need to pull it up, tuck it in, <laughs> tuck the bloat in. <laughs> None of it was a good look. <laughs> but yeah, a great bit of kit. It served me well. Ultimate Direction Ultra Vest, five star for that. It got everything in. That is going with me to both of these bits of kit. Actually, I think all of these bits of kit will be on the 13 Valleys. Phoenix Head Torch, yet two of our lucky listeners will be sporting some of those soon. Awesome bit of kit. Like I said, plenty of battery left. Ooh, two nights. You know what? This time of year, I think it could do two nights on the Head Torch. And, um, and warm when it's not cold, because you have to think mm. about that in October. That if is you true. get cold, it, the battery will drain a bit, won't it? Suntour Race. That had loads of battery left. No dramas, you know, a lifelong Garmin fan. I know. So it's, it's a big shift moving over to Suntour and it was fine. Oh, no dramas. Ultraman Blanc Carbon, even in all the filthy mud. And even was... if you walked most of it in your carbon <laughs> shoes. <laughs> but yeah, say it again. They are going to be my 13 Valley shoe. Unless it's, unless it's disgusting weather. Yeah, we'll see. In gingy socks with uh, trench cream. Yeah, that worked really well. No dramas. I'm going to lose a toenail, but I was going to lose a toenail from something else. So this is just aggravated. You Goku Projects, super kind of those guys. They sent me a sample for a new book of cap they're going to launch soon. So it's not the finished product. There's a bit of work to be done on it. But yeah, really There were grateful. comments. People were mad for it. Mad for your bucket hat. <laughs> you did look like you were going to a festival. 1980s sort of. Kevin and Perry. 1990s. Kevin Perry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and compress sports. I've had these compression oh, shorts. we know. Ooh, 2016. Ooh. Keeping the package secure. No drive. Yeah, no... Actually, imagine that. Oh, goodness me, if I had a tear. I don't know. Let's move on. I'm not sure if I'm going to use... Lord, I think I've got to go for red. Red's not the signature colour, so there will be probably some red outfit in 2025. We'll see. But yeah, thanks everybody. Thanks to all the people who supported me with as far as kit and yeah, just general support over the weekend. I felt the love, although yeah, I'm feeling a bit bruised. My cup is full. The cup of love is full and you have to just keep taking from it when you feel that sense of like... 
it's 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 hard to find words for it because I don't think there are words for that. Like, because disappointment is like, well, it's what am I disappointed in? Like, I've got to finish. I've still ran that far. I you done so much because you conquered. You know, in some ways, it's that what you did was much harder than the year before because it's, it was hard. It was you know yeah. you were. And so then you're like, well, what am I disappointed in? But of course we invest, oh my God, you more than anyone, invest so heavily in this. But also maybe that's why we invest so heavily is the jeopardy of it. We always talk about the jeopardy of it. And you love the process, Gary. You probably yeah. more than even than me. You love the training. You love the, gr you love the grind of the addicted, week in training. love or addicted. I'm not too sure where the, yeah, where the lines closely, are. They're closely, yeah. um, they're close bedfellows, aren't they? And so... You kind of have to go back to that. Like you had a great, you had a great block into the race. You had a great marathon and all that fitness, as I've always said, when my races have not gone, you wouldn't have been able to do that and death yeah. march that if you weren't as fit as you were, because the body would have broken down even it's more. Still is Stunk and fast time. I'm really mindful. It's still, I know, I know. <laughs> that I'm so mindful. I'm like really feel bruised and sorry for myself. And but you're but that's not that's nothing to do with the time that's more that you would yeah. you know you you you're you, the way that it went you're disappointed that you didn't get to enjoy it and it was just True. like heinous yeah. that's what you're more than the time well, yeah. although i just cruelly missed out last year my memories enjoyment from last year's uh, race but yeah i i am mindful that 26 hours was it 15 minutes i'm not too sure the exact minutes a lot of people out there would swap with me in a heartbeat as far as that's that yeah, but you were wearing red shorts and not many people would swap that. So I think it's sort of like, <laughs> let's, let's take the hook. Are you ready for your quick five? Oh, okay, okay. Have you just Googled these though? Normally you just Google quick five. Or something. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I do. Do you want them or not? Because frankly, you know what? It's, I'm hungry. It's lunchtime. We could end this. End this okay. <laughs> okay. You're no longer a podcaster. Or an influencer, so you find you're kind of you're actually a teacher. You've gone back to school. You find yourself in the corridors. Which classroom are you turning into to go and teach? What are you teaching? Do they call it CDT anymore? Well, you busy make stuff. What do you are you thinking like design and technology? Like design and technology. That's what oh, it's I'm with you there. That's exactly what I was going to say. You should be doing. I thought yeah. you were talking like computering, like computers, and I was going to go. Oh. When I was at school. Oh no, I was really good at that. But um. My yeah, but that's when that. you just turn computers on and like press arrows and stuff. <laughs> well, the computers I was educated on don't exist anymore. They are well long gone. But when I was at school, we used to make, um, in, in metalwork, we used to make Death Stars and stuff like that. <laughs> they would pretend to be egg cups, but we just wouldn't turn the ends down. And we'd I think you need <laughs> to stick to the lesson plan when you do become this DT. But designer technology, yeah, that would be exactly... You'd be, you'd be great at that. But also the kids would be like, can we actually make something? Because all you're talking about is your running, running sir. Yeah. And they just want to get on. <laughs> they were the cool teachers. The computer teacher, we had a, I've said this before, we had a guy come in and do some spiritual talk at school and the computer studies teacher, the guy was basically asking, who listens to Black Sabbath? And the computer studies teacher was putting his hand up every time. So I was like, yeah, that's the that's the party I want to be in. But yeah, they were the cool, the, the design technology and the computer studies, they were the cool, they were the cool kids. Well, P teachers were the cool kids at my school. Mm, okay. I don't remember the DT. I remember a cigarette butts in the toilets of the P's. I think old P teachers used to smoke. What a Secret legend. smoke. What a legend. <laughs> <laughs> and there's Ron Hill tracksters. Nothing wrong with the wrong hill. Okay. We, you and I both thrive off a bit of routine. We pretty much do the same sessions every day. We do the same things every day. We even record the podcast at the same time most times. Each week, you're allowed to eliminate one thing from your day, your daily grind that you really hate doing. What would it be? One thing. Oh, yeah. These questions are a little bit better than you thought they were going to be, aren't they? Eh? Eh? I'm blessed, Eddie. They're not quick five questions. I'm blessed. <laughs> Next one's quick five. One thing. I, it's not a daily routine, but yeah, I don't get anything from it, anything fun. I'm really jealous of people's nice gardens and stuff like that, but that's not for me. I think so basically if you, you spend all the day doing your own personal joy. Podcast, yeah. yeah, basically. It's the joy club. <laughs> Rexy wants a friend. Uh, dog breed, what are you going to get? What they call the bull terriers with the, with the flat noses, the big flat. English, not the English, it's not the stuffy. It is the English bull, bull terrier. I'm not too sure why. I think as a childhood memory, a friend had one and it was just the nicest dog. I don't think it's going to be a good running companion, though. No, 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 it wouldn't be a good running companion. Is this a sofa companion? 
<laughs> yeah, cuddle companion. But yeah, a running dog. Well, I've struck gold direct. That collie staff breed run all day long. Although I wish he had a bit more staff in him, that kind of calmer side of him. He's all collie. Oh, Rexy. Yeah, the collie, the high alert collies, they are high maintenance. Aren't they? I like a spaniel, but again, they're crazy. Where are you going? Are you all going together? Because I can keep you all together. Or are you going to a pub? Where are you going to a pub? Where are you going? <laughs> can I eat? No, I won't eat. No, I won't eat. I won't eat. I won't eat. I won't eat. I won't sleep. Oh my God, I'm exhausted. <laughs> my view on it, I'd probably, I'd rescue a dog. So whatever was caught my eye. Whatever's there uh, that says, well, yeah, we're... you like Strava? I love Strava. <laughs> We were all going to take a Spaniel. When we got Rex, we were going to, we were all in for the Spaniel, but the cops had him. So Rexy was, um, Rexy was there. It was fate. It was meant to be. It's Groundhog Day. You wake up. You've got the choices of two careers and you can choose which one. Both begin with P. You can be a politician or a pop star. Which one are you going to be? Well, both can do wonderful things, can't they? You know. I've not known a politician to do wonderful things, but. Well, I've, in theory, yeah. in theory, they could do both do wonderful things. But the politician's a thankless job, isn't it? Even if you do great things, you're going to kind of upset quite a few people. Pop star, though. You couldn't it's go anywhere. View, isn't it? Because I go pop star like, yeah, give me I'm that all, microphone. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm all in there. for the kudos. I'm all, I'm all in the kudos. You, you're like, I'm. <sighs> But do I want to be on that stage night and day? And I'm like, yes, <laughs> sign me up, buy tickets. I'm ready to perform. <laughs> yeah. My kids went to see a show um, with their grandma and granddad. And the main part, one of the main parts was like ill just before the start. So the director had to read the part. Okay. Ooh. I was, and I didn't go. I was like, the one time I could have gone, I'm there. Fix a microphone to me. I'm here for it. I don't know the songs, but I'm sure I can, I can hold the tune. <laughs> it's very close. I didn't like to say politician. I think that's good because you also, you, what was it earlier? You've come across as a little bit of like, you're not going to do any chores. You're not going to help anybody, but you are, your day job is going to be a politician. So you're a nicer guy. Okay. Yeah. Last question. Every week we share our, our story reel on Instagram. I say we, I don't, Gary does. Um, what's, your, what's your song? What's your song? And this is a good sign of whether you listen to the podcast, because often when we interview people, if they don't know this bit, then we're like, you don't listen to the podcast. We've been used and abused. Well, I was thinking about this and I thought the easy option would be go for something Top Gun, Top Gun related. You know, that was the theme of the year. But I went for a walk with Rex on Tuesday. I was it Tuesday when I came back and these, yeah, these lyrics, this song resonated with me. There will be quite a few runners out there like me feeling a bit raw. Can you go again? What if it doesn't go to plan next time? And this song, yeah, it sums up how I felt and probably to be honest, how I'm feeling. And a friend, it's funny, a friend, Jocelyn, oh, she was out boozing with Lisa actually, so I'll give him all a lift home one night. And she said, um, this is the story. This is your journey. This is your story. It doesn't happen this year. I think I'm remembering this correctly, but it doesn't happen this year. Next year, you get your slate, you have a, standout performance and that is when you get your sub 24 it's meant to be the stars will align um and it, you know ultimately i'll get over it if it doesn't happen it is fine i don't want to over dramatize it i do know it is just running but we do pour every one of us you know we pour a lot of ourselves um into it and i think is it rocky you've got to be willing you've got to be willing to take a hit and um gotta buy a ticket the song is i if you've heard of this song, Eddie, I'll be amazed. It's a, I Must Be a Lover by the Gilly Mods. Is that on your playlist? Oh, yes. No, it's not on my playlist, but I do know the Gilly Mods. Yes. Well, it's a love song and it's like basically... Dedicated was, to me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you finished my sentence, Eddie. It's going canny. <laughs> I'm going to attempt the lyrics. I've tried it a couple of times. I do put a little bit of effort into this podcast and rehearse. I'm going to attempt to lose. You might have to help me already, so I'll copy and okay. paste onto the onto the. Um, and I've reduced them a bit because sometimes the songs they repeat the line. <clears throat> anyway, let's bear with me. Deep breath. This is going to work. Wish me luck. The storm is over. Chase the rain, and up on nowhere hill, the sun is out again. I must be a lover. The tangled beauty of the fight has fallen in my arms. It's begging for a light. Come and find me. I must be a lover. Or sometimes I feel like dying. I feel like failing rather than trying. But oh no, I'm not going back to the place those thoughts attack. So lift me high above the clouds where electricity is calling to the crowds of better lifetimes to discover for all those jilted lovers. And if you're listening far away, hold up your hands and let me know that you're okay. Or life will be all right. 
It's just the past you're leaving. We are standing on the shore. Let the memory out the door. The light is changing colour. Come outside and be a lover. Oh, you made the race. You made the lyrics. And I love that. I love that sentence of almost the simplest one. Oh, life will be all right. Yeah. When you're in the when you're in the deep dark steps of a really hard race and you're and and your tunnel vision like comes down and down and down and it's it's hard to see anything else. What I'm so impressed, Gary, is like you were so even though it was horrendous and you had no fuel and wasn't the race you wanted to be, you were in it. You were in it and it just became about the finish. And like they say, life will be all right. It will be all right. And I put on Facebook that the hardest ones they hurt the most, but also they are the ones where we learn, where we yes. learn, we learn who we are out on. And I do believe that these big, these endeavors, the, these um, adventures, they show who we truly are when adversity hits. Robbo has shown as your buddy, like you guys, he showed. Oh, he stood up. He stood, he stood up. Stood up Smith. But you stood up too when, you know, the chips are down. You're a you're a public figure. You're going to come on a podcast the week after. A thousand <laughs> people are going to listen and you have to go. It's really hard. You've yeah. shown, you know, you've told everybody how hard you train, how much it means to you. You've set out your goals and then it doesn't happen. And it, it is really hard to face. Thank you. Thank you for sharing because it's not easy, I know. But there will be many, many people, you know, 80% of people are doing that race are probably a little bit disappointed in something that's happened the way they're done. But it's part of the journey. And it, at the end of the day, when we are our feet turned up towards heaven, our eyes closed for the last time, being on this earth is much more about the kind of person that you are, being kind, the character you are. And sometimes these really hard races you find out exactly who you are, what you want from life. You have these experiences with your friends that you can't, would never have on a trip to Tesco's or yeah. down to the park. Well, it, re so, it reminded me, it recreated um, Bob Graham round. Bob and I, you know, spent 22, 21 hours on the fells together. So, yeah, that is a big takeaway that, yeah, you know, there was enough in there physically and mentally to get to the end, but to spend a day plus two hours with your bestie on the trails, yeah. Be fortunate. I'll be yeah, eternally grateful for that. Just a reminder, I'm your bestie. Just to finish this off, that okay. close second. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, we love you. We salute you. And take this week rest, recover. Uh, when do entries open? So I think it's the first September. I hope. I don't know if this is the case. I've heard a few people say who are going for their slates that your four time finishers get a little bit of a bias in the ballot. Oh, because I, oh, I was wondering right. that. I was wondering if you were going to, what happens if you don't get in the ballot? Well, I just have to try again, don't I? Um, the following, I don't, yeah, literally. I don't think there's any special places get given out for that race. So, yeah, I'll be in the ballot. Yeah, from a entry point of view, the, I've, oh God, we don't even talk about the V50. I never really thought about that at all, to be honest. Um, it was nice just to get a guaranteed entry for the following year. I took a bit of mental heavy lifting off, but fingers crossed, Mark. I'm not too sure he listens, but yeah, it'd be nice to... All those people who were four-time finishers, they can be there next year to have another crack. Well, super kudos. Super kudos at four-time finishers. And looking forward to catching up next week when there's another a little bit of space between you and the race. And But thank you. Thank you for sharing. I know we said at the beginning, trauma... It shouldn't be content, but also it's our journey. And we didn't have a backup guest, Eddie. That's the truth. <laughs> well, to be fair, well, I'll tell you what, you were hard work. Jeez, I guess sometimes, you know, when they go like, we say our oh, cheek because it was so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and you couldn't. We last all long. love you. We all salute you. You're incredible. Well done. Oh, back, well at done. You. back at you, buddy. Hopefully that was okay, listeners. I coughed and spluttered my way through that chat. Yeah, I think hopefully some listeners out there, they may have not done the 100 or the 50 Beacons Way Ultra. That was kicking off over the weekend too. Fingers crossed they can resonate with that. Take something from it. Take a positive from it. Strava. Thanks Phoenix Light for sponsoring our Strava Club and Tales from the Trails section. And don't forget, patrons can enjoy 10% off over at phoenixlight.co.uk. Well, first off, it's a Lakeland 100 heavy Strava Club this week. Completely 
by chance. Yeah, so first up is Richard Ebbs, Lakeland 100 finisher. Awesome effort, Richard. 115 miles for the week, longest run. 105.8, 23,041 feet for the week. Gary Mort. Now, people will know Gary Mort and his partner, Cheryl. They've got a popular YouTube channel called The Trail Running Couple. So Gary Forty is a DNF for the Lakeland 100. And I nearly, when the wheel picked Gary, I nearly never shared Gary's trauma. His DNF doesn't have to be our content, but he's already done a Lakeland 100 debrief over on YouTube. So if he's okay with it being out there, I thought we would share it too. But yeah, pop over. I think uh, search over on YouTube, Trail yes. Running Couple, and you will find it. I'm just looking at them now, Gary. They've got some really good, all sorts of, if, you, if you're looking, Yorkshire Three Peaks, Howgill's Marathon, yep. Ring of Steel, Ben Nevis, um, Trifan, Crib Gok. Lots of content. Oh, yeah, my goodness me, they love running together. And they, yeah, they will go and do... Oh, event. and they've got a dog. Yes, they will do event routes too. So people are thinking, oh, I fancy a Bob Graham round or something like that. Then they've probably got some content around Would that. Yeah, go me on. and Bryn making... <laughs> videos they'd be like what, what why aren't you waiting what where have you got where's he gone what's he doing where, 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 would he be half you? stepping you but fair enough i know the hustle <gasps> when you doing the race with the with the gopro that is super tough <gasps> you, it's it's hard enough to get to the finish you know have the race that you want to do also then have that added pressure of filming too kudos gary yeah I salute you and your wife cheryl for showing up with your GoPro week after week after week. Uh, yeah, I do. I salute you. Last up, Sam Hodgson, Lakeland 100 finish two. I remember chatting with Sam, actually, so it's great that his number popped up on the random wheel. Select it, 110 miles for the week. Longest run, 105.7, obviously, and 21,201 feet of, uh, yeah, great effort, everyone. Sorry, no other races got picked by the spinner, but yeah, it was always going to be pretty biased towards the Lakeland 100 or Lakeland 50 this week. Great efforts, yeah, and fingers crossed you are all well on the road to recovery. Kudos to all our Strava Club members, and if you'd like to be with a random shout out, then yeah, pop on to Strava and join our Strava Club. Are you dot watching Dan Lawson in avid um, appreciation of the uh, brownest sky? Tan. Oh my goodness. Tan. <laughs> I wish I could pull that look off. <laughs> Can't he just pull it off? He looks so great. And I love the van of um, Charlotte and his family and his new puppy. The new puppy. <laughs> it's so funny. Every time the crew rock up to him, he's like, yeah, yeah. Hi, guys. Hey, oh, puppy. <laughs> So relaxed. I love his, I love Dan dearly and all his general ethos. And he's absolutely smashing that three peaks record. Well on track at the moment. Um, he will have finished by the time this goes out, but we're just sending tea and trails. Love to him. Vibes as we record this. Keep going. It's tough. He's in the toughest bit now coming up towards Scotland. Done the different way to what Immo Body did. He's gone from Wales up to Scotland. It's be interesting to hear which was, uh, I wonder which was, which is easy. I wonder why he went that way. If you were going to do it, which way would you go, Gary? I'd always go north to south. I just feel yeah. like I'm going downhill. <laughs> I don't yeah, know if that's I know. true. <laughs> I know. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll have to find out why he chose that way. But big love coming to you, Dan. Incredible running. Well done. This week's Tales from the Trails is from Ian Watson. I stepped up to my first 100 mile event with the Lakeland 100 at the weekend. Training had gone well and felt strong. Lots of great tips and information from Eddie and Gary over the weeks. Plenty of hours on the course. Plan A out of the window at La Trig. Plan B followed a few hours later. Plan C went on the stretch along Horsewater. I think a lot of people lost their souls along Horsewater this year. I think if plan A goes out the window, quite often plan B is closely followed as being <laughs> thrown out. And I think it's quite good to prepare yourself for that, isn't it? That often if you can make the, you make the mental switch, plan A is out the window. It's possibly because things are cannonballing quite fast down. Often plan B might go out the window. You might end up on plan C, but you can pull plan B back back through the window as well, because sometimes it's you can gone. rally. It's not gone. Often plan A is gone. And it's very hard to come back. But sometimes you shove plan B out the door and then you might open the door again and go, OK, wanna I think in? we can put you want to come in. OK, <laughs> I never uh, have a plan B. It's all here. I think if I've got a B or a C, too many options. Yeah. 
Yeah, I get that. We go back to Ian. Then I remember, nobody cares about your time. What is your why? Very good, Ian. Having spent nine months in bed, unable to walk before back surgery, Mr. Saxena, surgeon, I will always be grateful to put one foot in front of the other. But wow, I had to look deep into my soul to find a way to finish. And finish we did. Many fellow runners offered so much encouragement. One, 50 runner was amazing and stopped their race to walk and talk with me and to keep me moving to Ambleside. Sorry, I have no idea of your name. I was like a zombie. Love trail running and the people. I hope everyone else had a safe and enjoyable weekend on the trails. Keep the information coming. Eddie and Gary, thank you. Wow. Lakeland 100 is a big 100 for your first 100. That is incredible. And having spent nine months back surgery and then be able to do something like that. I think the finish is your plan A. I think you yeah. did complete your plan A, Ian. I think that's incredible. Well done. Use it as a building block. And if you've had a really crappy race, but you've done it, I think you you can build, you can take so much strength from that. I give you a heavy flex for that. Yeah. What a story. Incredible. Incredible, Ian. Thank you, Phoenix Light, for sponsoring Deals from the Trails. We love sharing your tales from the trails. Keep them coming. Email to hello at teaintrails.com. Would you like... A hot five-star review, Edwina. Hot five-star review? For sure, Gary. Give it to me. <laughs> well, I'm not too sure. We might have already done this one, but for fear of not reading it out at all, potentially going to do it twice. Hey, ho. Runner Reborn, cracking podcast, great hosts and guests. Just love the show. Started listening when I was injured last year to get my fix. Every week, it is a lovely mix of banter between the hosts, chatting the type of stuff I love to chat about with my running mates and bore my non-running mates with. Can I even call them mates? And they have some great guests too. Great insights into the world of trail and ultra running. And I'm enjoying it even more now. I am back running again. Keep it up, peeps. Kev, hashtag runner reborn from Kendall. And a kiss, a little kiss at the end. We are your friends. We are your friends. Gary just said something so inappropriate. We've had to edit it out, but we are friends with all of you, whatever you're doing. We love you all. And I think we'll just end it there. <laughs> We've got some winners. We randomly picked what we, I randomly picked. Someone's winning around here, Gary. It's not us. <laughs> Let's face that. <laughs> Goodness me, if we ever put out the unedited version of the podcast, <laughs> nobody wants to see behind the curtain on this on this show. Yeah, well, it's only because two... it's drivel. It's dr drivel. even more drivel than actually goes out. <laughs> yeah, we are. Do Phoenix here, Gem 65R hyphen T version <laughs> two head torches. What? Phoenix, come on. We love you. We love the head torches, but let's just call it the Phoenix light. Phoenix. Ultra beam. The ultra beam. Phoenix, keep you safe. Phoenix helps you find your snacks. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's head torch I use and it got me through the night. Luckily, you know, I only do one night, even on a bad year for me. I only do was one night. Was it bad that as you were coming down, you were finishing and you'd said to me, I'm only going to need one because, you know, even if everything's gone wrong, I won't need another head torch. And I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I did have my pencils actually in the backpack because I swapped them out with Dale Main thinking it'll be all right. But uh, yeah, thank goodness. Thank goodness I didn't need those little bindies. But yeah, it's the head torch I use and I think I checked just the other day and it's got still got two bars of battery light. So yeah, it's a full night of running on more than enough lumens than I needed. And Mark Dobbs too, of course, record holder and winner. He is a I don't Phoenix. reckon he, I know he's a Phoenix athlete. Do you reckon he even turns it on? He's he generates like, I am, enough. He, I generate enough heat from moving so fast. I don't really need it. I just. That's just rem remind me, we were going, I think it was Black Sail Pass, just as we were going over the actual pass itself. There's some guy without a head torch. And I was like, he had a head torch. He wasn't using it. I'm like, what are you, what are you doing? What's wrong with your head torch? He's like, oh no, I just um, night vision or something. He said, I can't remember his, his, his exact words. And I'm like, was it yeah, brain? Maybe <laughs> I could just see. I don't need it. Maybe, maybe like you do that, you test that out on a different day just for shits and giggles. But no, on race day, I don't know, night vision, whatever was going through his mind, he could have tripped over, and that's a race ending silly decision. Anyway, sorry, I don't want to. Start throwing people under a bus. Our winners are, we've got a Patreon winner, and that is Paul Ravenscroft. And our Facebook winner is Phil Wrench. Yeah, thanks to everyone who took part. And to Phoenix Light UK for supplying the prizes.
What you got coming up, Edwina? More running next week? So much excitement. <laughs> I have got the absolutely same of the same. There is Groundhog Day here. I do have the kids are in a sports camp next week. So I have mm. a week to get some work done, to do some runs, not at five o'clock in the morning. Just a bit of time. Freshen myself up a bit mentally and physically. So that'll be nice. A bit of a change. They need a break from me and each other because they've been their sole companions the last few weeks. So that will be that will be nice. A little bit of headspace for everybody. I'm, I'm giving up trying to run fast, Gary. <laughs> Maybe I'm never going to run fast again. But I am. I'm hoping to add a little bit more volume on the run I'm going to I've got my bike and my turbo so I'm going to put a bit of intensity back into that and see how the body reacts to that maybe on the bike maybe some YouTube videos on the same time yeah. we it's not gonna hurt is it what's the weather where, like where you are because the thought of being on a turbo trainer where I'm at the moment like 28 degrees and really humid yeah I'm in Scotland Gary it's raining outside the window it'll be fine okay fair enough um also, it's just such a good way of training when you've got family around, because even if it was boiling outside, I just put it outside. It's like a really lightweight, easily transportable one. I just put it outside if it was hot. Yes, it would be nicer to go cycling. Do you know what I really want, Gary? But this is thousands of pounds. I really want a gravel bike that I could ride around. Oh, awesome. Neil, on, you'll hurt yourself already. You'll just no, get too fast. Why would... <laughs> no, steady Eddie. She's got Suicide steady brakes. Pace. She'll run through those. I'll rub those brakes uh, pretty strong. I really want one. So I'm thinking maybe birthday, Christmas combined. I could. I love the idea of going out on the trails on the bike rather than, you know, just having like a couple of sessions swapped out for biking. And also it's a bit more kids friendly. My kids love for cycling. They would definitely cycle a lot further than run or hike so but they also are absolutely kamikaze on their mountain bikes and I don't really want I don't like to be present when they're like coming down gullies and stuff anyway so I'm going to mix it up keep mixing up keep building up I'm not going to say I'm going to do all sorts of things because it actually just adds to my stress about then when I like it doesn't feel right so I'm going to keep it organic and keep listening to my body and hope that things turn the corner with a little bit more stability and a little bit more rest um, my HRV for the first time ever, Gary, is the lowest, like in the red, all sirens flashing that Bizarre. things aren't right. So, That's and you know, we, you know, we always say, um, we don't listen to it. Oh, we don't listen to our HRV. We just see it and we just carry on as normal. I was like, maybe, <laughs> maybe it's a sign, Eddie. Yeah. Um, so I'm hoping, yeah, hoping a little bit more time, a little bit more volume and let's see what will happen. But I'm not, I'm not going to make any of you any promises. Okay. So then I can't disappoint. <laughs> What about you? What's your week look like post race? How does my week look? Yeah, little hundred thirsty Thursday. It should be Thwaitsy's Thirsty Thursday, but I don't go that often, so I'm reluctant to call it Thwaitsy's Thirsty Thursday. So it's Thirsty Thursday, little hundred debrief tonight. So that is why the pod will be late. It will not be out. So yeah, definitely the earliest Saturday morning. Sorry, I just can't wait to have a few beers just to chill um, out. So the podcast will not be out on time because you'll be hung over? Well, no, I'm going out tonight. I would like literally, when we stop recording now. Out, would, out. Uh, you're going out, out. Uh, well, we'll out, stop out. about 11 yeah. and you're going to be out from there. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Yeah, I can't wait to have a few bees. I can't wait for the uh, my lips, my moist lips to touch, to touch the. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to savor every last drop. Are you now? Because we're not, <laughs> we're not big drinkers all the time. How two many pints. two pint wonder? Oh, I wish I was there. You and I. I only need one. I'd fall Maybe. asleep literally. Sunday, we oh. went to the pub, had some oh, the, food, and um, yeah, I was. Um, sound like a fun time. <laughs> we were all just, oh, especially me. I think I was just sitting there, like nodding oh, off God. after about two pints of beer. So yeah, I'm not full of bands after a few beers, but yeah, I can't wait. Nothing as far as exercise concerned. Apart from walking the dog, little Rexy, we'll be spending quite a lot of time together. Loads of sleep, no alarm clocks. That is 
the plan and lots of food, you know, maybe because I've got these 13 valleys on the horizon, what, seven weeks now until it's up. But I'm already feeling a bit dirty from the all the Oh, you shouldn't snacks. do. You allow, allow, that's what your body wants. Allow, <laughs> allow that those dirty snacks in. I think it's really important to let go of the reins, to, to show yourself that you can let go of the reins and that your tight control all the time is not healthy habit, I don't think. I think it's well, good. I think if I, if, if I never had 13 valleys, I probably would be a lot more relaxed, but I don't want to put on, I could literally, I, I've said it loads in the podcast, but I could quite easily put on a stone just eating pies and chips and Shut crisps. Shut up. Do you know how hard that would be for someone like you to put on a stone? That's like half your body weight. You'd have to like <laughs> sit still all day. It would have to be, work, it, it would have to be like a full-time job. <laughs> well, yeah, I've got all the nutrition in it. I never is. <laughs> basically talking to me so yeah move away from the pies and the chips and the fish and chips and the beer and uh, a bit more fruit and veg can I ask a favour yeah England Athletics Volunteer Awards are open I've done a shout out and I'm asking a favour <laughs> completely I know jeez <laughs> I'll pop a link in the show notes, but yeah, could you please give East Durham Running Club a vote in the North East section? I would normally, if anyone from Sedgefield Harris is listening, thinking, oi, what are you doing? The way it's he, giving a shout out to another running club, but Sedgefield aren't nominated. So that's why I'm shining a light on East Durham Running Club. But yeah, it's a great club. It's a quite a new club, actually, and it's doing wonderful stuff. You know, East Durham, it's not a hotbed of athletics and outdoor no sports. One, no one in the Olympics from East Durham? Oh, 100% there will be. Um, but yeah, it's quite a depressed area. So a little, you know, local community running club like this doing a great job. Give them a vote. Appreciate that. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you are the back end of Lakeland 50, Lakeland 100, or any big race coming off any major life stress, hopefully we've given you a bit of a pat on the back, a little bit of a hug, arm around the shoulders and gone. We're there with you. We feel it. Highs and lows. Let's surf it all together. Please give this episode a share. Pop over to YouTube. Subscribe to. Uh, this really helps us loads. Helps us grow and makes it possible for us to keep showing up week after week. Even if you don't want us, we're still here. Thank you to Precision Food and Hydration, X Miles, Phoenix Light and Protein Rebel for sponsoring this week's show. Remember the customer discount codes T15 for Protein Rebel and Caps Lock T24 Precision Fuel and Hydration. Thanks to all our partners and patrons too. We couldn't do this without you and your ongoing support. Be kind to future self and breathe and believe. Progress, not perfection. Keep your shield high. Yeah, and please, <laughs> I'm not a good advocate for this at the moment, but yeah, please fuel like a champ to the bitter end. My name is Gary Thwaites. And I'm Eddie Sutton. That was episode 82 of the Tea and Trails podcast. Mm-hmm.